everybody. Good morning or good afternoon or good evening, depending on what time it is for you or you are. Let's see if we can get, yeah, there we go. There we go. There it is. Let's see if we can get the game screen onto the stream. How is everybody? Happy Wednesday. Welcome back. Hey, Hazel and Chat. Good noon. Good noon to you. I'm about to have the I was going to call it the snooziest. Coziest? We're going to have a time. I wanted to play my Warlock today. I want to play my Hardcore Warlock. But I need some game sound. And I want to show you what else I've been doing too. <laughs> Making me sleepy. I'm not going to lie to you. We're not feeling 100% today. But we're going to make this work anyway. We've got, we've got wolfies on the shirt. We've got this cozy sweatpants. We have the fuzzy layers. We're... We got half a cup of coffee still, you know, there's hope for us. <laughs> Will you talk about the DNA results on stream? Yeah, sure. Um, yes, DNA results. I, uh, I won't, like, you know, post the, the whole, the whole thing, because some things, I mean, some things, some things are, some things are paywall. But, um, yeah, we got Moose's DNA test results and found out that he's a dog. 25% beaver, 32% mountain goat, 11% cat. Who would have thunk it? <laughs> mm. All right. Um, on hardcore, I've decided that I'm Hazel and I get to make as many alts as I want. And I don't got to answer to nobody about it. So I'm, making, I'm trying to get more classes. I still want a rogue. Um, this is a mage called Fleep. I made it because I was going to be on hold on the phone for a really long time and I wanted something to do. And I got her all the way to level 6 before the phone call was done, which should tell you something about how that went. And then this, this person, this gnome, she is Bopsy. <sighs> Found out Moose is adopted by me. Um, no, not, not drunk. Never drunk on stream. I find that very unprofessional. Uh, mages are nice and hardcore since you never have to worry about buying water food. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, gnomes for the win. I've discovered that solo warrior is tougher than I thought it was going to be. Um, I was, I was noodling around on them in the starting area and I discovered that it is a lot early easier to die on a, a solo warrior than it is on the other classes that I had tried up to that point. <laughs> Um, let's just say Bopsy's not the first of her, her ilk. She is the first of her name, and she shall reign superior and live forever. Um, she's level nine. I guess I can check, I guess I can check her auctions. Um, I'm gonna play my warlock today, but I suppose we can look and see if Bopsy sold her leather. <laughs> it's the best ever no warrior game. No. Wetlands is dangerous. So many herbs guarded by so many dolls. <sighs> Don't enjoy the loop of fight one mob, eat, fight one mob, repeat. I didn't find that was um, the case on the warrior, but it um, you're very vulnerable to accidental um, or purposeful overpulls, and you don't have, at least at this level, a ton of getting out of there. Um, I also, add on in, in all of my emergencies, didn't have any health pots yet. Oh, ho, ho. I'm mining skinning again because it's the best profession combo, so she's rich. I bought linen bags on her because she I've decided she's basically an island, but she needed them. We bought linen bags, and we... What else did I want? I have a green pants. I have a green tunic. I have a two-hander. That actually dropped for me in the, in the Wendigo cave. And at level 9, I don't know. Armor, mail... I don't know if there's going to be greens yet for me. Let's look at cloaks, actually. Let's look at usable cloaks and see. Because she's a... Uh, uh, no, we're still talking just armor only. Head, shoulder, chest, waist. Any green belts yet? No green... No green belts. Uncommon... Yeah. We have legs. No level 9 wearable boots or bracers. Just chest and legs for now. They kind of come in. Oh, no, those are cloth. Those are cloth! I'm so silly. I think it's gonna be the same thing, but <laughs> yeah, just legs and legs and chest pieces. That's okay. <sighs> Bopsy is rich. Uh, yeah, she is. She is in my war at level nine, freshly level nine. She is my hardcore warrior 
record. She, it is the farthest I've ever been on a solo warrior or a warrior in hardcore. Sold all that leather and all you got was 28 silver? Um, yes. You know what? I'm really happy hardcore is doing pretty well. I was worried it would be a ghost town two weeks in. Time, if you told me that right now was two weeks in, I might believe you. <laughs> time's, time's been going crazy. Mm. Kitty Cat War, thank you very much for the three month resub. Mid sized dog came back as a mix of Chihuahua, Pomeranian, and Rottweiler. <laughs> Figure that one out. Holy moly. Did the did the Chihuahua fall in love with the Rottweiler or what? Holy moly, that's a that's a thing. I um uh what did I sell? I sold Oh no, I got a recipe from Flabby. You were supposed to COD me that. Um I'll stick that in the bank for now, I can't learn it yet. And then I sold a green. My warlock has 29 gold. She's not even saving up for a mount. My hunter is saving up for a mount. Warlock has, looks like at least a level of rested, so that'll be kind of nice. I guess I took a couple days off of her. I took a few days, few down days. Oh yeah, <laughs> I got a fortune from the Darkmoon Fair the first time it came around and it said avoid taking unnecessary gambles and I thought that's one for the bank. And then there's the, the Westfall Prairie Chicken. So let's throw that in there. Anything else I want to carry around in the bank? I've got a silver tabby cat and I've got a parrot. I'm gonna bank the parrot for now and I'll have the ca the cat out for the moment, the time being. Um, I bought some apples for jungle stew. I bought some apples for jungle stew. I also have some jungle stew, so I have some eight stamp food available. I basically, what I want to do today is just grind mobs, mostly beasts primarily, in Northern Stanglethorn very carefully because it can be a dangerous zone. And I want to um, farm <laughs> leather, maybe some mining nodes, but primarily leather, and just get experience. I'm level 34. Did I get any and all warlock training I needed? Do I want any of these? Uh, no, 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 no. 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 Nope. I don't think so. Equipped in the offhand. Enchants the main hand. I'm not gonna worry about that. Rituals of summoning. Nah, I'm good. I don't need any of that. Auto pull, thank you very much for the 35 month resub. Just in time with my lunch break. Happy Wednesday, Hayes Lunch Out. Happy lunch break, Auto Pull. And Liberty Bell 41 with a 20 month resub. Always enjoy your stream, learn so much, and behold, need all the help I can get. <sighs> Excited to be here today. Maybe I can metaphysically transfer my serotonin. I want to RP walk the line in the Stormwind Bank. For a moment, I thought maybe that meant like a like a movie, like there might have been a, a famous film called Walk the Line that had like a bank robbing scene that you wanted to act out in role play with your WoW characters. And then my second theory is that you just kind of wanted to go through the the red ropes. <laughs> yeah, Addy Bags is the is the bag out on. I'm going to flight path my way back to, how do I want to get there actually? There's no flight point in Northern Stranglethorn. We got to run from either Darkshire or Sentinel Hill, it's kind of gross. I'll run from Sentinel Hill, I think there's less pa chance of um, stitches, batches. Hmm. The ropes just call out for it. Ready to risk it all for a steel bloom spawn. Sell four for one gold is crazy. Yeah, Steel Bloom, and then when I eventually one day meet, not in this character, but on my Hunter, Gold Thorn will be good. I've been buying them on the auction house and then crafting with them with alchemy and then selling. I've been basically just like doing a mini version on classic of what I did on retail. Just crafting for profit on the auction house. She's not making like, you know, gold hand over fist, but she is making a profit just sitting in town getting rested, so I can't... I can't fault it too much. This is classic hardcore WoW. If we die, it's over, and I'm hoping that doesn't happen today. I'll put up a prediction, but I'm hoping that it doesn't happen today because... I'll, I'll, I'll check the slash plate, but I feel like it's a good chunk. Start a prediction. Is today the day that the gnome lock dies? Start the prediction. If you have channel points that you wanted to put on the line, Hmm. Oh yeah, my plate tip slash plate. Three days and 21 minutes. We just recently cleared three days played. 
I'm gonna get my Void Walker back, and then our first order of business when we get to the zone is going to be no our soul shards because I didn't have. I need more. <laughs> I need more. Making me want to jump back on WoW right at this moment. If ever it happened, today would be the day. It's true. I've had two days off. I haven't played the Warlock in a couple days. I was needling around on a on a warrior and other other things. Um, <laughs> sleep the mage. We're rusty, but you know, all I want to do is um, have some fun. <laughs> so, uh, I'm tempted to like fight some mobs here to warm up, but I'm 34 and they're 17 and it's not really a fair fight. Rathrood is quickly becoming a favorite. Poor priest parked in the wetlands. Druid's at 38, very pleased with a chunk of damage she can crank out. Have you done the rumble crossover thing? Get all the minis. I haven't. I couldn't decide if I wanted to. Yeah, that's where I'm at with that. It seems fine. It just didn't inspire any spark of, of action in me. <laughs> um, maybe because it's a toy or maybe because the the Mechagon mini toys never... I They're, they're on the never ever use list. Um, and maybe it's my inherent cranky, curmudgeonly prejudice against mobile games as, um, shiny cash grabs. And don't get me wrong, capitalism is a cash grab. I could, I could, I could, um, you know, chase that rabbit hole all the way down until nobody's happy anymore. But, eh, yeah. <laughs> Got them all, yes, it's very fine. Very tired morning. Good morning! Gives a toy, you haven't done it yet. Yeah. Yeah. Does this surprise you? Wait, oh, there's copper over there. Am I selling copper? I suppose so. <laughs> I don't see why not. This isn't exactly what I came here for, but um, yeah, have a couple of dots, and I'll just go get the I'll just go get the stuff, and then we can sell it later. It'll be great. Not a fan of the mobile games at all. It's just not a platform that I'm particularly interested in controls-wise because the main advantage of it is something that doesn't really apply to me. Mobile games are uniquely suited to providing gaming entertainment when you're filling gaps of time out in the world. And I, A, don't go out that much. And then secondly, if I do have gaps of time out in the world, it's usually better for me to just like, I don't know, people watch, <laughs> think some thoughts, feel some feelings, um, try not to chase away every moment of boredom with something shiny because uh, I'm prone to doing that and it's not done me any favors in my life. So, and then, and then aside from that, outside of that, widely speaking, mobile games have normalized more predatory monetization systems. And it kind of feels like when you're looking at it, like you're looking at a big box of stuff that does, hasn't hooked you yet, but the purpose of it is to hook you and then separate you from your money. And the, the joy that it, you know, supposedly offers you in return is... Looking thinner every year. Um, there's a, you know, there's 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 other ways to be happy. But then again, I, like I said, I'm cranky, curmudgeonly, um, no fun. <laughs> Sometimes tired. Hasn't finished coffee yet. Um, so please don't let me harsh your Warcraft Rumble Buzz. Um, it looks cute. I don't. There's nothing as far as I can see wrong with it. I'm just grumpy. Uh, for some reason, Gnome seems a thousand times better in Classic when we go adventuring. Leaning towards because movement speed is too high in retail. Hmm. Can you imagine being a Gnome getting dotted and then being ignored in favor of rocks? <sighs> Sapphire Rocks, thank you very much for the nine month resub. Happy Wednesday, Hazel and Chat. Happy Wednesday. Team Grumpy. <sighs> yeah. That's yeah, okay. Sometimes you're gonna get grumpy days. <laughs> I have decided that my grumpy days are fine as long as I am not um, mean. <laughs> that's the that's the rule. I can be as cranky as I want as long as I understand that it's a me thing and that it is not being inflicted upon me by other people um, and that I am I am not allowed to be mean. <laughs> can be mean in your head. Mm. Favorite Care Bear is Grumpy Bear, the blue one. Only one with a different face, so I'm like, hashtag Team Grumpy for life. Excited to see what happens today. Yeah, I think that we might have a nice, relaxing, 
stream with some mob farming. Maybe some greens will drop. Hmm. Maybe we'll make some gold. Let me see. How much stamina do I have? I have 126 bonus stamina. My health pool currently no priest buff, no food buff. 1951. Pretty chunky. Hellgrave similarly at 1557. Takes a long time to get back to Stranglethorn Vale. Hmm. <sighs> I like that rule. Yesterday, someone definitely needed to hear that wasn't me, but someone. Hmm. <sighs> yeah, it's tough. Everyone's going through their own stuff. Oh, oh, I thought that was for me. It's it's for a black rat. I was, I was going to avenge it, but that's okay. You know, wolves got to eat. Death log is showing the red on the map. That's the death log heat map. <sighs> what was the command for the death? Wondering how old that video is. Exclamation HC, I believe, is the one that you're after. How many bag slots have I got? 56 bag slots available. Raptor flesh. Did I not cook my raptor flesh? I meant to. Roast raptor. I guess I just don't have any hot spices. I was going to buy some in town and then I didn't. There's copper. No, we're moving on. We're moving on. We have enough for now. Uh, if you want to be a little mean, I am curious about mean Hazel, so sign me up. It's not one of the better human instincts. Um, it's... Uh, I feel like, uh, like many people have the capacity to be uncharitable and it doesn't do anybody any good. Certainly not the person you're being mean to, but it doesn't make you feel any better either. It feels like it's gonna and it doesn't. <sighs> I do better just kind of giving giving people the benefit of the doubt and just assuming maybe something's up with them that is causing them to behave in this way and then trying to find a way to isolate myself from whatever the craziness is that I don't want any part of. Incidentally, I've isolated myself for most of the world, but that's just not, that's just like a different issue. We're going to farm. There are quests that I'm, what does they want me to do for that one? The Curzon compound up here is death and we're not going. Um, <laughs> we're not going to do it. That is bait. So we're going to farm raptors and stuff. Um, you know, lions and tigers and bears. Oh my. Sheesh, it's from August. Spider sausage and hardcore, also 12 stam. I believe so. Requires level 35 to eat. 12 stam spirit white spider meat. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I want... Do I even want to pick up that quest? I don't even know if I can. What is it? What do people sell around here? I thought he said corporal kebab and that maybe he had lunch. Is there a vendor? Camp trader. Do you have hot spices? What are you looking for? You have apples. I need to carry around a stack of apples because they are useful for the jungle stew. And jungle stew is annoying because it crafts like it needs water and apples on top of the tiger meat, but it makes two servings per plus it's eight stand food. Um he does not sell hot spices. Be careful. It's not my fault you're boring. Okay. Mm raptors and stuff. We need to be quite careful. Careful. We'll start maybe with like the crocolis and the young tigers north of the river by the south of the river actually. But if um, if it gets scary then we'll find some place safer. Do a little jaunt over to the friendly old cars and compound. I hear they have uh, s'mores and um, projects. All right, I need soul shards because I'm not carrying around a hellstone, and that's a problem. So we let Hellgrave go start tanking. It's nice playing a, a tank, a pet class again, after a little while of playing non-pet classes. I like having something else tank for me. <laughs> Racy Sapphire, thank you for the 35 month Reese. Appreciate it very much. Uh, staggered action bars, like it, curious at the same time. It, so I'll, I'll walk you through my logic. If I look in bartender, and you can see how the bars are delineated. There's just a lot of buttons that are not bartender. Um, if you look at the bars, you've got bar one corresponds to my keyboard. So the keys that I'm using on my keyboard are laid out exactly like this. We've got QERT. Um, F and G are over here, Z, X, and V are over here, and then I've got a couple modifier keys in there. And layout-wise, it's very much like 4 four by 3-ish, right? Like it's it kind of maps to the, the way that my left hand sits on my keyboard. 
six over here, um, one through equals, that maps to the grid on the side of my mouse. And this is laid out in that three by four pattern. So I have the bar mirroring that um, because it maps nicely in my brain. I can see that I can see the way it would appear on the side of the mouse. And then this one over here um, is the exact same thing as the mouse, but with a shift modifier. And because it's a modifier bar, it's smaller. Sometimes in retail, I have another one that is exactly like this that's stacked on the right. And that's the alt modifier for that for the mouse buttons. And it's um, it'll be the same size. But in my brain, it's smaller because it's a modifier. And that's how I distinguish them. The pet bar just kind of like sits over here. And it's I haven't really thought about that one very much. So it just kind of, you know what it is? It's a city landscape. <laughs> Hubby and I had kebabs for dinner today. We needed a treat. Been a rough few days. Mm. Social squirrel here. Got my broom yesterday. Doing loop-de-loops ever since. I did some... I The mount special for that broom is certainly exuberant. I was on it a little bit. I did a couple of keys last night um, on my priest with some friends, which was really fun. And I was riding the broom around inside of, inside of dungeons. So I want another soul shard. And then we're going to make ourselves a hellstone. I need even one more because I like to have my hellstone ready. My voidwalker summoned and then another two shards beyond that. Mm, not going that way. That way's a trick. Well, I mean, as long as I stay outside of the compound, this area should be okay. Let's poke around a little bit. There might be, um, sometimes there's ore, I feel like, on the outside of these mountains over here. Young tiger. Let's go, go give that a try. I also need to get my food buff up. But I'm not, I'm not really in the mood to do any big risky pulls or anything. At least not right now. Um, so if it's nice and straightforward and easy, that's fine with me. <sighs> Dizzy from the loops. That's broom. Darth Hazel. How did keys go? They are good. We did a 18 Nell Slayer that was supposed to be a 16 Nell Slayer, but then um, our tank forgot to drop the key, and then we just sent it anyways. <laughs> and we we timed it. I'm pretty sure um, it got a little spicy in a few parts, but that's how you that's how you relearn your toolkit. It was good. It was fun. It was nice to talk to people again. There we go. Lack of flight pass in classic is annoying. I could do with a few more flight paths. I do think though that the lack of flight paths is gonna make me feel... I guess I don't need another one. I guess I have enough soul shards. When I do eventually get my mount in six more levels, I think it is going to feel magnificent. I am going to cruise across this land like a powerful racing entity. Uh, you know, a spirit among mortals. On my, um, Dreadsteep as it stands on this character. <laughs> Uh, do I cast Renew again? I do, but I don't. The funny thing is I don't need to yet. I'm casting Renew again because I put it on my bar again in anticipation of next season's tier set. But I don't have next season's tier set yet, so it's not useful. It's not proccing anything for me yet. But I'm just kind of using it as a filler spell because I put it on one of the big buttons and it felt like a good idea to press. Um, I'm sure I'm not playing optimally, but the important thing is just kind of brushing the rust off. And remembering how the whole thing works. If that's something that you want to do anyway. I... Hmm. Oh, there's a, there's a leather over there. Mm. Playing retail and specifically doing keys after having done a lot of classic feels like you have gone... Like, to an arcade and then been trapped inside of a neon sign. Um, on like a... <laughs> I don't know, the vending machine. There's so many blinky, flashy lights. I don't know what any of them mean. <laughs> I ended up just kind of relaxing my eyes and relaxing my brain. And just uh, my... I feel like I can kind of... not, And I'm not saying I can do it well. Um, but I've played enough... Um, wow. Especially like just like healing dungeons. I've healed enough dungeons that I can kind of do it Not subconsciously, but I can do it by muscle memory. I don't need to really think about it And I figured I would have a better time if I wasn't trying to think about it and If I just kind of let the healing happen look at the pretty lights 
deep breaths. Enjoy talking to your friends. I'm gonna eat, um, I'm gonna eat a piece of food. Hungry. Hmm. How do you feel now about them introducing flying and wow? Have you changed how you feel since hardcore? Uh, how do I feel about flying? I'm trying to come up with a better answer than I don't know. Um, I think I have a lot of separation between hardcore and retail in my mind. I wouldn't want flying in classic hardcore. It would, it would mess with the fundamental things that I find really engaging and thrilling about it. But I wouldn't take flying out of retail because that's those same principles and that same level of thrill is not what retail is about anymore. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know if I would do anything differently if I went back in time and it was all up to me. Once you get your mount, then you'll need your carrot on the stick to increase mount speed. Oh, I don't want it. <laughs> At uh, one point about adding more flight points to classic, taking small steps like that is how you turn it back into retail. And this is true. This is true. Hands off my flight. Bag out on looks so tidy and nice. Yeah, it's it's good. It's Addy bags. I was really resistant to getting a bag out on, but I needed categories. And retail lets me do that with some level of automation without any add-ons, but you need an add-on if you want to do it in classic. <sighs> I'm going to go maybe farm... The raptors on the other side are going to maybe give me a bit more experience. This is going fine, mind you. These ones are 31. I'm 34. They're green. I have rested. Um, I'm 20% of my way towards level 35 is going to be my next level. Seems with a 33 month reset. I haven't been around much, but it's nice to catch up. Good luck in hardcore. Thank you very, very much. I like the idea of what 14 does. New zone. Got a grand mount until you fully explored it. Then you can fly there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Not a bad idea. Got my carrot on stick today, level 47, almost 48. Nice. I feel like the wind with aspect of the cheetah in classic. Yeah, my hunter, my hunter feels a lot better when she's getting around. Although, have I even been going places, my hunter? What did I do last to my hunter? I was just leveling up the bear is mostly what I was doing. <laughs> Salmon, I think, is now two levels behind me, I think. Maybe three. Um, my hunter hit 30, and I feel like Salmon's close. Close enough to be reasonable. My hunter's still going to be questing in Duskwood. I think it's funny that I have two characters in their 30s because... I mean, it's it's fine. You rotate them, you get rested, etc, etc. It's not a bad idea. It's just... Uh, it's very like me. Um, I think I enjoy the first 30 levels more than the part that comes after that. Even though it is kind of cozy to settle into grinding on a character that has a bit more power. And it is fun to grind and farm on higher level characters because they make dramatically more gold. Uh, you you pick up like more valuable items just out grinding on a character that's above 30. But uh, <laughs> I definitely get the urge to mess around with very low level alts in hardcore even when I haven't died. Just because, uh, you know, things happen a little faster. The pace of it's very different. Hmm. Druid and Wrath has been fantastic. Got travel form at level 16, riding at 20, insect form, and moonfire is health damage. Go for the friendly raptors. Go through the troll camp on your way. Uh huh. I gotta go visit them and see if they have any snackies for me. <laughs> oh, I got a banded cloak of the bear. I'm rich. Bear stuff usually sells pretty nicely. Mm, of course, level 24. Yeah, that's a good. That's a good one. <laughs> Bobsy would wear that if she made it to 24. Uh, no, there hasn't always been, um, well, not self-driven flying in WoW. There's flight paths, certainly, which is kind of flying, <laughs> supposedly. Hmm. I want to skin that one. Why didn't you loot it? Let me have your leather. Let's see, I got my food buff up. I got my demon armor up. Is that really all the buffs that I run around with? I used to quest and grind with, like, a full flight of, um... A full flight of flasks 
And I've gotten cheap since then, apparently. <laughs> I can make the good flasks on my hunter, but I don't even use them on, on her. I make them and then I sell them. <laughs> I, uh, I figure if I can live and I can grind and I can get experience without using them, then that's gold that I can save towards getting better armor. And if you're wearing a better piece of armor, that's like a flask buff that you have up without a duration. Huh? That's a buff you have all the time. I'm just being cheap. But it feels better to spend gold on armor that I can wear than it does to spend it on a flask that's going to last for an hour because hours go by pretty fast. It's a long time, don't get me wrong. It's a good, it's a good length of buff. It's certainly better than this 15 minute or 30 minute or whatever on earth is going on in retail. I do I want a gorilla? Lash tail raptors. We can go this way, but we need to be really careful. That's a, a yellow level. Yellow difficulty. Helgrave, you go get it first. You go get your five sunders. It's nice um, on the warlock having your pet automatically level with you, plus being able to just train it stuff from the demon trainer. <laughs> You know, it's gold, but at least it's straightforward. You get more done in 30 minutes in retail. Huh? Maybe you get more done in 30 minutes in retail. I don't know if you've seen me try to get anywhere in Vildorak. <laughs> I can spend 30 minutes trying to figure out which door I was trying to go through. Hi, Hazel. Good morning. Hello. Good morning. Uh, yes, my alchemist can make elixir of fortitude. I have been crafting those to reasonable profits. Died at level 21 of my priest doing the elite quest in the entrance cave of the dead mines. Did it in a three man. Those respawns were too brutal. Oh no. Hi Hazel. Hello. How you doing? How are things? Mm, thingy's chilly. Oh. Mm. Coffee's all done. That's good. Got some water. Oh, I, did, I wasn't retaunting. I, I ripped off of him because I wasn't letting Hail Grave tank. <laughs> Oops, a daisy. How much those hit him for? He got down to like 75% health. Those are reasonable. Um, they're also skinnable. I don't hate that. I think I'm still gonna poke around for the raptors. But if I can do any of these quests and also like safely get the mobs I need for without, you know, putting myself into bucket loads of danger, I might do that. They say these quests are 35 and 36 for the elder tigers and the lash tail raptors. We'll see. We'll take a look at it. We'll have a little, have a little look and look and see. None of that. Too early in the day. I'm so sorry. 15 minute food buff duration is when everything else is 30 minutes. It's just annoying. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the food, the food lasts for like no time. The yawning. It's gonna happen. I am not one of those people that can suppress yawns and just not have them if I'm sleepy. Teasing you. Oh, I see. I'm so sorry. Almost died a couple times. It's always been from super fast respawns. Thankfully, I've been in groups that saved me. Mm hmm Yeah, it's... That is, that is, I think, what takes out a lot of people. Speaking of taking out people, should I have Deathlog running? I had hidden Deathlog's mini list recently and turned off the alert. I just kind of wanted some peace and quiet, but... What if it's making me feel like I can't die? I missed today's prediction. I think so. I think so. We ran that one already. Pe people been voting. People been voting. It's okay. There's there's no way that we die. We are invincible. Is that a lash little raptor? It is. Level 35. Uh, lash and growl. It should be fine. Do they call for help? We'll find out. I pretty much never use um, Shadow Bolt <laughs> or any other like casting filler spell. Maybe this will change at a later point in Warlock leveling, but I am happy as a clam to just put up three dots and then one. <laughs> it's like my favorite. What have I done? I've life tapped. That's not what I meant to do. There we go. We want to consume shadows. Today you are invincible because you are feeling a little hoarse. <laughs> Ah, I get it. I get it. Take a nap. Let the gorillas respawn. <laughs> Just let the let the friendly local creatures build you a hut of of restfulness and peace. Ah, oh, yeah. I don't think I'm tired. I slept. I think I slept fine. I had insane dreams. 
there there was a werewolf and he was teaching us to not be prejudiced against werewolves and I was like yep very good <laughs> certainly um, that tracks <laughs> Strangleborn area yoga retreat I would have some coconut ginger juice and I would braid some grass and then be disappointed that I didn't do it neatly enough and then maybe go fishing and then and then catch a fish and then cook it with some chili powder and take a nap. <laughs> Run by nesting wearing co naturally. The Serene Dream Spa, Tropical Edition. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So we did one of ten raptors. What do we get for it? Fourteen hundred experience. I feel as though the experience that you get for these nesting wary quests is below par for the level that they are. Um, maybe it's because they're such grindy quests or... I don't know why, but I feel like you get more experience for other quests that are the same level. STV. Mm -hmm. It's a different animal with no PvP, but it's still kind of a sketchy place to be. Things can happen. There's a lot of dangerous mobs here. Quests are sketchy, yeah. Yeah, I've decided I'm not doing the Curzon compound. Um, certainly not at this level. Maybe not at any level. I'm working on the nesting wary stuff, but I'm mostly just trying to find a nice place. These last shell raptors seem like, like I can do them pretty safely. How much experience do I get for this? I do have rested, which is pretty tasty. Keyring is stuck in the dead middle of my screen. Can't seem to move it. Ooh, um, that happened to me. It was a... Was it a bartender thing? It might have been a bartender thing. It might have been an add-on. Oh, I've completely forgotten. The only thing I can say is that that happened to me and I did fix it. I'm the worst commenter on the on the forums. <laughs> you ever go to the troubleshooting forums and somebody's like, yeah, I had that thing happen too. It was just like that. It's fixed now, but I don't remember what we did. <laughs> Good luck. Was a bartender thing. Why does the map look like that? Uh, Deathlog's heat map shows areas where people tend to die. Something, something, lock key ring to bags. Yeah, that sounds right. That sounds promising. Hi, Hazel. Love the hoodie. Hello, Senora Boo. Thanks. I'm having a, I'm having a real cozy day. Sometimes I'll wear like warm, fuzzy, cozy clothes for breakfast, and then I'll change into a quote-unquote outfit for stream, which might be surprising because I wear pretty cozy clothes for stream. <laughs> And then sometimes I wear something fuzzy for breakfast and I'm like, you know what? We're doing this. This is it. This is the look. <laughs> this is fashion. Oh, congratulations. It's been it's been chilly out here locally. Rainy. Puppy gets very muddy. I clean his paws, take him outside again, gets muddy again. Never ending cycle. Book was finally in my vault today. <gasps> Tad and Fab, congratulations! That has been that has been tormenting you for I mean, you know, you don't need me to tell you. That's been tormenting you forever. Months and months of searching. It's supposed to get to 34 overnight here this weekend. Fahrenheit? Cause that's pretty chilly. If you're talking Celsius, then I am so sorry. <laughs> My apologies to you and your family who I'm assuming have melted into puddles of you on the floor. 27.8% husky puppy. Where are you getting 27.8%? Unless you're adding together a Malamute and husky, which I think is a controversial thing to do. I want this one. Yeah. You want to talk about his genetics? He's a, he's a dog. He's a dog. You know what's funny is we were talking about how he might have, um, how my puppy, my, uh, my mixed breed shelter puppy, we were talking about how maybe he had hunting breeds in him. Because he does like the quivery paw thing whenever he's like got his attention locked onto something. Um, and he has a lot, he has 14 different breeds that they were able to identify in him. And I'm pretty sure none of them were hunting breeds except for maybe like Labrador. Uh, he has, he's 5% Labrador. Miss the DNA info. I did it as a member video. I did it as one of my YouTube, I did it for a YouTube member video. Um, is where I actually like posted, posted the results along with some extra puppy footage. So that was their October video for the ten dollar YouTube members, but um, I, uh, I I don't mind I don't mind talking about it. He is twenty four percent German Shepherd puppy. 
currently 80 Fahrenheit in the CT Connecticut. October crazy. Rottweiler Husky mix, aka a Rotsky. Labrador will do the paw thing. Yeah, but he's only 5% Labrador, you know, of, of 20 parts. One of them is lab. <laughs> He's, uh, he's, uh, he's got a lot of different breeds going on in him. <sighs> he's only 24% German Shepherd, and that's the biggest chunk, and that's the one that, I've, like, people, people ask if he's a purebred German Shepherd puppy. CT is Connecticut. Oh! I have this, this kindergarten meet and greet, um, instinct to ask you to tell me more about Connecticut. <laughs> and I don't know why. I guess because I don't know anything about Connecticut. I don't know why they don't call it Connecticut. Do they like Legos there? <laughs> oh, the 20th part is the paw. That's true. Yeah, it's his front right paw. It's the one. Looks like at least 50% German Shepherd to me. Hmm. A new dog. Yeah, naturally inclined. Mm hmm. <sighs> DNA is wild. Yeah. Uh, did they ask for a photo of the pup as part of a test kit? No, they did not. Just a DNA sample. Um, they just took a they just took a a, a, a saliva swab, like a, a cheek swab. <sighs> uh, worth noting that um, dog DNA testing is a little bit it's 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 the same it's the same way they do human DNA testing, but it is still somewhat newer science. Um, we picked the company that tested for the most different types of breeds and had like a good variety of samples, but there's still no guarantee that it's like 100% accurate. Um, but based on based on what they were telling us, especially because they, they talked about like genetic markers for different traits that he might have, and they correctly predicted his his color pattern. They predictly correctly predicted his coat. They predicted his ears. Like they they knew a lot about him just from the cheek swab. CT native. Some of it is like Gilmore Girls. What are Gilmore Girls like? Uh, some of it is post-industrial strip mall, and then there's Yale. <laughs> Yay, 34. Mm. How have you never heard of Gilmore Girls? I've heard of it, I just haven't ever seen it, so I don't know, I don't know what they're like. They kind of sound like they might like swimming in rivers. I have not watched Gilmore Girls, no. Um, do they go lobster hunting? Do they like to catch crayfish? I think the gill is throwing me off. You might like it. They talk a lot. Oh, it was filmed in Burbank. That sounds like a place that has rivers. <laughs> <laughs> if I was going to make up a fictional name of a place that had rivers where you might go swimming and then looking for lobsters, a cold river. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I need one more lash tail raptor. They talk fast. Mm -hmm. hmm. Has exactly one river and it is only a river in title. Oh. What is it in actuality? <laughs> hmm. Actually guild amphibious teens running around. I feel like that was a star. Drainage ditch for the San Fernando Valley. I see. You should watch it on Netflix if you haven't. It's a favorite in this fall weather. Oh, okay. I feel like I missed a lot of shows. I mean, I guess I, I because I've not seen it, I can't equate it to other shows. But there was a lot of a lot of shows in that general category that I did not watch. Um, and I don't know why. I don't know if I didn't want to or if it just never came up. <sighs> morning, Hazel and Jack. Good morning. The thing that surprised me the most about Moose's DNA test is that he is... Oh, those are scary ogres and I'm leaving. He is more Malamute. He is more Alaskan Malamute than he is Siberian Husky. He has both. Um, those are the second and third... Um, the second and third ranked breeds in his DNA, respectively. But he is he is more Malamute than he is Husky, which might explain why he's such a big boy. <laughs> Malamutes can be can be beefy dogs. They were bred to pull loads. Um, they're sled dogs like huskies are, but huskies were more about distance and malamutes were more about like cargo. Single mom of a smart kid. She got her when she was 16. She got her. <laughs> uh, they live in a small town full of quirky characters. It's a fun watch for the most part. Cozy show. I see. Oh, 
That sounds cute. Mm -hmm. I want one more flash down right here. Child acquired. Oh, go to go to go to child store. Go to go to go to child store. Take child home. I want um this one. I want one more lash tail raptor. <laughs> Had whatever. <laughs> Not native speaker, stop mocking. <laughs> I want Can I fish that? No, my fishing sucks. My gnome's not a very accomplished fisher woman. 30 minute from Stars Hollow from Gilmargrass. Hmm. Did I, did you resist all of my dots? What's happened here? <laughs> Have you ever wanted to do or even done a human DNA test? For me, no, know my heritage exactly. Got a lot of amateur geneal genealogists in my family. I've never done, no, I've never done a human DNA test. And I couldn't, I could give you a few reasons why, but it's one of those things where it's not like, if I gave a reason and someone argued with me, I'd be like, yeah, you're probably right, I don't know. Um, they're not like strongly formed convictions, it's just kind of like a vague feeling. The first part of the vague feeling is that, you know, enough governments have my DNA, I don't need to give it to the rest of them. <laughs> the Canadian and American government both have every biometric piece of data about me available. Up to and including eyeball scans. Um, so, we're, you know, I've given out enough information. And then the second thing is like, what's it gonna tell me? You know, like I'm, I'm, I have ancestors from Europe. Wow, <laughs> you look at that. I think it's just because I got a little tiny bit, um, and this isn't very fair because it's it's totally natural to be interested in your history and your lineage and to want to know more about yourself. Um, but there was like a, you know, in Canada, most people in my community were, you know, like third or fourth generation immigrants, right? So like our families came here, grandparents, great grandparents, sometimes great great grandparents. But Canada is a pretty young country and a lot of people came from Europe in the last like 200 years. So, so it's, so we're all, you know, generally speaking, culturally Canadian to a greater or lesser extent. Some people will celebrate their, their lineage more or less and that's totally fine. But you would get people that would I like learn about their their history and then all of a sudden start to identify with it really hard in like a high school way that is in, again not a problem not hurting anybody but just gets a little bit much you know somebody discovers that they have an Irish grandparent and all of a sudden they are Irish and they require you to call them you know like it's a whole thing so um and that that um it wasn't everybody but it would come up every now and then and uh I don't know, it just kind of felt like a fancy version of a personality test. It's like, oh wow, <laughs> a white Canadian. I have great grandparents from England? No way. Um, I didn't really feel like it was going to tell me anything aside from that I'm probably predisposed to some form of disease or another. <laughs> um, eyeball scan was immigration. I guess the Canadian government doesn't have my eyes, but the American one does. <laughs> If you have an Irish grandparent, then Ireland considers you Irish. You can prove it. You can get an Irish passport. I didn't know that. That's actually really cool. That's actually really cool. Does Moose have any chow in him? Dog was only a quarter chow. Body looked like a purebred except for his coloring. Got it from his coonhound father. That's cool. Moose did not have any chow. No. He has um, a, he has like 1% Maremma sheepdog. And then like 1 or 2% Keyshawned. He had a couple of different spitz breeds in him, including the Malamute and the Husky. But... Um, but no, no, no chow. I don't get the obsession with genealogy in North America. I think sometimes, and I'm talking out of my butt about something kind of sensitive, so I'm going to apologize in advance for saying anything un untowards. I think sometimes there's a little bit of a lack of a shared identity or culture um, that can lead you to be being a little bit isolated. And you just really want something to connect with. Uh, you want something that feels like unique to you that you can kind of claim as a, a group that you're part of. Um, because it's, it's a bit easy to get <laughs> disenfranchised if you don't feel like you have any, any kind of community or claim to being like different or special. I think it was just a way for people to, to feel a little bit more unique, I guess. You can join a club. <laughs> you could join a club. You can have a hobby. <sighs> 
I've I've accepted that I'm as special as I'm ever gonna be, purely for the fact that um, I'm the only one in I'm the only one who is me, and no one else is me. <laughs> to quote May Martin, uh, I'm stuck with I'm stuck with me forever, and uh, I don't ever get to be anybody else. So I am special by pure virtue of this is the only identity that I occupy. You want to talk about whole milk names? <laughs> hmm. But yeah, I'm pretty sure my European ancestry is a good chunk from the UK. Um, there are a couple of grandparents and great-grandparents that are from Eastern Europe. Um, but I think it's all fairly... I don't want to say unremarkable, but it's not a culture that I'm really claiming in any meaningful way. I would claim to be Canadian because I am and I'm proud of I'm proud of that. Am I? I don't know. I don't know. I'm I'm good with that. <laughs> let, let, let's downrank it from proud and go with we're cool with that. It's fine. I like it here and um, and I'm happy that this is home. I'm lucky. You might be a Viking. Yeah, but like is knowing that my my you know Giga Google grandparents were Vikings going to make me any better at like I don't know. Jumping really far, doing pull-ups. <laughs> if I want to get better at that, I should probably work out. <sighs> is the place where you were born is as far as it goes for me. Mm -hmm. Mixed race, both sides consider me to be of the other race, so I'm nothing. That's got to be so frustrating. That's that's really no good. I mean, not that you're mixed race, but that um, that you're treated like that. That's no fair. You want us to get you a Viking helm to wear for stream? I saw, on the topic of Viking Helms, I saw, I was like kind of paging through the digital bookstore just like idly, and there was like a section for like cozy fall hobbies and crafts, and it was a book, and it was called something like Cats for Hats, no, pardon me, Hats for Cats, and it was a book about how to craft hats for your cat, which is fine and good, out of cat hair, which is a little less fine and good. It was like a, and and the, the cover image is a cat wearing a felted Viking hat, complete with the horns, presumably made out of their own or another cat's hair. Um, I was reading that being like, is this insane or am I just really tired? <laughs> Brother has that book. Oh man. I can, I can understand all the different components of how somebody might get to that point in their life where they are hand felting hats for their cats out of cat hair, but taken all together, it is triggering the nope alarms in my head of nope, don't do that. <laughs> Something, something's not good there. Hmm. Father was a professional sax player. Doesn't mean to have music ability whatsoever. Feel like genealogy is overrated. I think it's certainly fascinating and it's fairly harmless. Um, I'm just, again, being grumpy about it. Or not even grumpy. I don't. I really don't mind. I really don't mind. Um, don't mind. It's just something I've not pursued for myself. <sighs> I do think lots of things um, can be. Lots more things can be genetic than we maybe, or you know, passed down through families than we maybe give them credit for. But um, when I think of things that are passed down genetically, I'm mostly thinking of like <laughs> anxiety and multi generational trauma, not not fun things like a <sighs> athletic ability or you know boat piloting love to see you back after your weekend how was it it was all right it was nice enough it was cozy it was a lot of home time uh took moose to the park a few times um gave him a bit got him he got really wet and muddy and then we gave him a big bath and it was the whole thing oh, i've been feeling a little bit um a little bit tired so just gotta stay close to home mm. sounds ideal yeah it was nice enough I did an errand that I'd been avoiding, so there's one less on my list. Um, it was awful. <laughs> I hate it when I'm avoiding something because I think it's going to be awful. And then, you know, the common wisdom is like, it won't be as bad as you're worrying about. And then you do it, and it was as bad as you're worried about. And then the second piece of wisdom is, you're going to feel so much better once you're done. And you do it, and you don't even feel better. It's like all of the promises were a lie, and this is why I avoid things, is because they suck. <laughs> I feel betrayed by the universe who promised me that things would be better if I just pulled up pulled up my socks and, you know, did the adult stuff. Uh, opinion on a dwarf based XB. x back x back <laughs> For a moment I read XB's experience. Like, dwarves get more experience, different experience. Dwarves exclusively gain experience by mining and archaeology. Um, expansion. Would like a dwarf themed x back I think it'd be fine. I have, 
a concerningly low amount of investment in whatever the expansion is, theme-wise. Um, I think they're all fine. What what expansion would I not like? I guess if it's too grim and dark and grimy and like with big spikes, I would. I you know we did Warlords. I'm I'm over I'm over the brutal thing. <sighs> I'm not too I'm not too I'm not too fussed. I'll go wherever they send me. I mostly just want to do keys with my friends and raid and you know run run old raids for transmog. <laughs> Aaron sounds like involves the mag mages spawning phone call. Sympathize, I hate phone leg work. You just, you call about one thing and then you realize that, yeah, sure, you can take care of the one thing in the phone, but they also need a bunch of other stuff from you and you're going to have to, like, collect a bunch of stuff and then do, like, a mail thing. Like, I <laughs> I got more homework from it that I then need to get more information from other people. It's just, ugh. <sighs> it's fine. I'm glad I did it. I did make progress. Um, but, holy moly. Cats and gnomes all the way. You're telling me you wouldn't be extra happy with a gnomes and cats expansion? I think that um, a gnomes and cats expansion, while being up my alley, would enrage the general population to the point that I would feel rather attacked for enjoying the cats and gnomes. I think it might spawn a World of Warcraft culture war of the put the war back in Warcraft people versus the let me pet the cat people. Um, and, uh, you know, I don't want to fight. <laughs> I just want to play video games. <laughs> Cats and gnomes all the way. I don't want. I don't want to become a, you know, a front a front line um a front line figurehead in the pro cats community. <laughs> Entirely located in the revamp valley of the Fort Wind. Elder Stranglethorn Tiger. Oh, I've already killed two of them. It'll be fine. Map was announced. People were vocal about. Geez, Kung Fu Panda this and that. So cats and gnomes should be okay. Yeah, everybody was very mature about that one. Good day. How's it going? Hello. It's going very well. How are you? I'm having a nice, a nice grindy day. I think it's, uh, I think it's working out, working out just fine. So the Raptor Master, I have to, turn, I have to go all the way back there to turn it in. They're not just gonna automatically do that one. Gnomes turn into a cute kit instead of a fearsome cat. Talking about cat people, just started Final Fantasy XIV last night. Very nice. Not me rolling a Windwalker Monk Pandaren, so I could have a Kung Fu Panda of my own. I mean, it was a fun movie. <laughs> It's been an hour. How much progress do we make? Uh, I'm up to 44% of my way through my level. I don't remember what I started at. 44%. I do have rested, but that's okay. I rested because I took a nice break. Uh, I have 32 bag slots left. I've got just the one green so far. I could probably, with a food buff and maybe a little bit of concerted effort, start doing double pulls. Because I'm not really going out of mana. And I do have an upgraded version of um, Life Tap, but I might have to pay more attention. Maybe I'm just happy with single pulls. <laughs> maybe maybe we're living our lives just fine. Especially when they're all spread out like this. I think that this area is actually decent for grinding because you're unlikely to get more than a double at most if you weren't planning for it. Um, and it's good skinning, which is one of the things that I wanted. Fun, fun three or four movies. They made three or four of them? I guess that shouldn't surprise me. I'm I'm that hypocrite that like whenever I see them just cranking out sequels, I'm like, oh, the sequels are so tired. Come up with something new. But then they come up with something new and I'm like, I've never heard of this. I won't watch it. <laughs> I am the problem. Um, I need some kind of an in to buy into watching a movie I've never heard of. And it has to, like as either like a known quantity in like a director or an actor or like a IP that it's based on or something. Uh, if I've never heard of any of it, it could be the best movie ever, and the only way I'll watch it is if it, a ton of other people take that chance first, and then the word of mouth buzz gets back to me. It's really hard for a fresh IP to get a foothold. <sighs> Somehow made like five Twilight movies. There was some, um, what, four books though? Three books? Twilight, New Moon, Breaking Dawn, Eating Teenagers. Twilight, Full Moon, Breaking Dawn. Was it just three? It's been a long time. <laughs> Eclipse, thank you. Yeah, there was at least four books. So five movies is a stretch, but not a huge stretch. Why would you watch a movie without Gosling? I did finally watch the Barbie movie. So I saw, I saw, <laughs> I saw Gosling as a kid. I got a big kick out of it. It was a fun movie. Just like the last one. 
Yeah, it's become a real big trend. I mean, they did it with um, Hunger Games as well, and I'm sure a bunch of other stuff, to break the final movie into two installments. I think it's in some cases it could be necessary, in other cases it's really not. But if they could film if, if, if they could film Return of the King in one book, then there's really no excuse to be splitting up everything else. <sighs> I think uh, I think enough of them flopped that they've kind of uh, let that strategy go. Is the movie worth a watch? Return of the King? Yeah. <laughs> I have a feeling that's not what you wanted, though. Which movie? I have not watched Nimona, no. Kind of hate watch Twilight. I'm old. And Rice Era Vampires. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I liked it a lot. I was the right age for it. Um, I won't argue that it's good literature, but it was great fun as a as a 12 year old full of feelings. Oh, Barbie. Yeah, yeah, I thought Barbie was great. Um, I thought it was worth a watch for sure. It's not gonna like change. I mean, it might change your life. I don't know. It was fun. <laughs> it was funny. <sighs> I want this one. I didn't have a huge, like, emotional connection to the Barbie franchise or Mattel going into it. I had a couple of Barbie dolls as a kid, but I don't remember a lot about them. But they just made, like, a good movie, um, which I think is the, the key and important thing. I want this one. I refuse to watch The Hobbit for that reason. The book is tiny. Making multiple movies was a blatant cash grab. Mm -hmm. Have you watched the Lego movie? I think I did, actually. I feel like I watched it randomly in theaters when it came out. Maybe not. Maybe I rented it. But I remember enjoying it way more than I thought that I would, given that I didn't really have any emotional investment in Lego either. But that was a... I think I got a good kick out of that one. But I like family movies when they're well done. I guess it's not that surprising. They make them for parents to watch, too. Eight of ten tigers. Nine of ten tigers. Oh, no, you're not a tiger. You're a blood scalp shaman. He does fire nova in rage and lightning shield. I'm going to fight him. I want to know how it is. Hmm... I am going to cursive wreck him, though, just so that he doesn't run. And I'm going to put one shadow bolt on him because I'm uh, splurging. <laughs> so there's the enrage. He does hurt. Um, Hellgrave went down to half health, which means that he took, like, I don't know, 800 damage, 700 damage. It's quite a bit. Hey, I got one of the green hills of Thranglethorn. Wow, would you look at that? Hmm. Level 55 went down. Oh, dear. I can't click on that button to get it. How did they die? Barbie gave me a similar vibe, having seen nothing but the trailer for Barbie. Hope you're having a great day, Hazel. Thanks, Jeff. Like the Lego movie tech? It's cool. I've kind of wandered too close to trolls and ogres. I was looking for tigers. Any kitty kits? Big scary kitty kits? Mm, Murloc, 35? Yeah. We've gone a little deep. We've gone a tiny bit deep. You definitely don't want to get too close to Gromgol, and you want to watch out for the ogres, too. Uh, somebody killed the kitty cats. That's no good. That's no good. Fellwood Demon Cave. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. At least I can skin them. Oh, there's one, there's one, there's one. Yeah, go for it. I want to know why people die right there if it's just the troll camp. I think it might just be the trolls. They're they're quite dangerous. I know people die to King Bangalash. So I want to be a bit cautious of wherever he patrols. I think actually I can look that up on Deathlog after this. Watch him patrol onto me while I have the add-on open looking it up. <laughs> Uh, yes, there's some murlocs just, just down there. There's one right over here. Murkill Forager. Okay. Mm Deathlog. Zone stance. Stranglethorn. Thorn. 
Oh, it's like really changed. I swear King Bangalash used to be on the top deadliest creature list and he's not anymore, so. King Bangalash has 200 points. Oh yeah, no, he's like way down there. We don't have to worry about that, we're fine. We're fine. Uh, yeah, we can kind of loop back up. I need just one more big tiger though, just one. Single. Guy Walker, thank you for the 20 month resub. Appreciate it very, very much. Murlocs are evil. Oh, I found a tiger. There we go. Now oh, the fancy box said Lord of the Rings. Cool bookend sculpture of Gondor on my shelf from that. That's cool. Fine famous last words. Oh yeah, tiger respawns now. There we go. And then we're gonna stand not on the Murloc side. Yeah, that's fine. There we go. Is there anything else? Yeah, so they want me to farm Shadow Maw Panthers over there, and that's something we're not gonna do yet. <laughs> that's kind of a later me thing. Um, and we're gonna kind of skirt around the troll camp. We're not going in. That's a 32 Paladin fighting a 33 Blood Scalp Warrior. He's probably fine. Yeah, 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 yeah. If, uh... I mean... Yeah, 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 he's, it's going great. He's got this. He knows what he's doing. <laughs> you don't want that cat? Oh, you're dazed. Are you okay? I think he's trying to leash it. I'll grab it if I can. There we go. <laughs> Let him perish! <laughs> no way. He was fine. He was totally fine. Slash. I always wish people good luck. I... Oh, we did Tiger and the Raptors, so we can go back to town and turn those in. And then maybe Kitty Cat, you want to come up and sit here? <laughs> Water breathing buff him! Oh, I forgot. Oh, he gave me wisdom. It's very kind of him. We did want to watch someone die. Yeah, but like, in theory. I feel like it needs to be something where I couldn't have helped, otherwise the guilt is going to keep me up at night. Especially for like a level 30? Man, that's like days and days of playtime. Or at least it is for me. <laughs> hmm. You should turn on target of target. Oh, I'm okay, thank you. I want to get up to the camp and then turn these in. Maybe take a short break. We made it to what time? Is it 10 a.m.? Something like that. Yeah, I forgot how cozy the higher level of streaming. S streaming? Well, streaming and also um, <laughs> farming can be. I was a little worried about playing my Warlock again. I hadn't played it in a little bit, and I was a little worried that I was going to just, you know, get myself into trouble with a capital T. But it's nice. You know, we're getting lots of leather. I'm going to be able to post all this up to sell. We can make some stew. <laughs> Who doesn't like stew? Nanny Wammy, thank you for the 39 month reset. Good morning, Hazel. Good morning. I hope you are at the beginning of a wonderful day. Or at the very least, a deeply satisfying one. Filled with all the things that you wanted to do. I've been uh, doing kind of spring cleaning, but in the fall, which doesn't make any sense. But, um,. It's just uh, every now and then I get in kind of a cleaning mood and I end up moving a bunch of stuff around and well met. and then I clean it all and then I go, wow, this looks great. Why didn't I do this the whole time? <laughs> all right, so we're definitely not doing those yet. Those jungle stalkers are for level like 40 plus, so we're going to wor not worry about that. I can make some more stew. 
We can make even more if we had some water. I think this is a pretty safe place to AFK, but I'm going to log off just in case while I AFK because uh, that would be a big bummer of a way to die. How is Hellgrave handling this human jungle climate? You know, you'd think that it would be harder for him to find shadows to consume, but my guy here can consume shadows anywhere. I think spring cleaning in the fall is just cleaning. <sighs> It's nice, though. It's something I'm very surprised that I enjoy as an adult because I was not a tidy or clean person. I did not really take to to cleaning style chores as a teenager or a young adult. But at some point, it occurred to me that they make me feel better. I will be right back. Okay, I got water. I'm happy. <laughs> Benedict Cumberbund. <sighs> we good? What do I want? I want Vita. <laughs> Cozy. We are halfway through 34. How's my, uh, we got 11 Raptor Flesh. Supposedly we can sell those for like 250 each. And if I am satisfied that I have enough, um, well, those are 388 each. <laughs> I could maybe sell the Raptor and the Tiger Flesh that I've been farming instead of cooking with it. Uh, is cooking them not? Oh no, Jungle Stew and Roast Raptor are both profitable. Suppose it depends on if people will actually buy the cooked food or not. But for some level 25 characters, it might be difficult to get 8-stand food otherwise. Like, you're not really going to be farming these these mobs at that level on your own. Oh, there's Tin over there. Kitty cat, do you want to come hang out in my lap? <laughs> gremlin mode activated. Oh, Kitty doesn't let me gremlin too hard. You can't have your feet up and the cat in your lip. We've tried that. It results in um, fallen cats. Hi, baby. You want to come up here? We got a huge dog bed. Really fuzzy, supposedly... Did I get a memory from one? I don't know. Big, comfy, fuzzy dog bed. Big. Big bed for big dog. Because um, I wanted to have an extra one to put set up in the bedroom for eventually when Moose is sleeping in there. And at this time, I set up the bed, but um, he only he's only there for visits right now. Because he's, he's still on supervised visits to the back rooms only. And the cat has discovered this big bed, and she's decided that she likes it just fine. Um, and she takes up, like... 4% of this bed. That's probably not fair. She takes up a very small amount of this bed. <laughs> and she'll she'll plunk herself right in the middle of it. And she'll get all loafed up. And she'll look all pleased with herself. Like, yep, I'm sleeping here. <sighs> she's, uh, she's cute. I think the dog's gonna have to gonna have to have a conversation with her later about about the big bed. <laughs> Either that or they're both gonna have to find a way to share, which would be very cute. We'll see. How is it you can adjust your mic arm on the fly without it making a huge noise? I want to say it would have to do with the mic arm. This is a Rode PSA-1, which is kind of expensive for a mic arm. Failing that, um, maybe a little lubricant in the hinges? <laughs> oh, mechanical nerd question. Although, I don't know. Unrelated, I need to get some WD-40 because I have a piece of patio furniture that I've had on my balcony that's kind of like rusted into the open position and it's fine except that I need to dissolve and or remove somehow enough of the rust inside the hinge to close it so that I can put it away for storage for the winter. And the trouble is that I don't fully remember how it's supposed to open and close in the first place so I'm a little afraid that I'm like trying to force it in a on a hinge that doesn't actually bend that way and you know, I don't want to break it. I like it. <laughs> it's a cute little table and chair. It works good. You have like your little cup of tea out and by the plants and stuff. So I think what I need to do is I need to A, get some WD-40 or other, you know, rust managing slash lubricating agents. And then secondly, look up the instructions for the chair slash table to uh, verify exactly how it folds so that I'm not trying to force it in the wrong direction. <laughs> Heard of a thing called a pee plaster. Penetrant and lubricant. I am 
First of all, that sounds exactly like what I need. Second of all, I'm amazed that Automod let you say that. <laughs> that's mad. That's magical. It's good. <laughs> hi, kitty cat. Have you said hi? I think the chair arms are a little lower than before, so if the cat looks shorter, it's just because I've adjusted the chair arms down a little bit. How are you, Miss Kira? You like the new big bed that's definitely for you and not for the big puppy? <laughs> that's how it's spelled! Ken second. So what is it- what is the application that you guys use that for then? Is it for kind of what I'm looking to do here? With, you know, rusty thing rusted open needs to be- make hinge move again. You want to know what completely ridiculous, irrational thing I'm kind of cranky about? <laughs> That's like, and the most pointless, not important, not relevant thing at this time. <laughs> Um, uh, loosening frozen, rusted nuts on cars. Oh, I see, I see. Hmm. I bet you, here, let me write that down. I bet you that's the kind of thing they'd have a Canadian tire. <coughs> Pardon me. Pardon me. I am a little hoarse today. Cook herb bronze tube set hearts. I had a, that must have been for um, Duskwood. <sighs> okay. Mm. Need, need eat, eat stew, <laughs> eat jungle stew. <sighs> Haven't used it. What you said sounds exactly like how I've heard it described as used. Okay. Yeah, hopefully I can get like a small amount for not a crazy amount of money. Cause it's like a, ex it's one of those things where I like have a really tiny job and I just need to do it like the once and then I'm going to get a whole thing and then have the thing forever. Most of my tools are tools that I purchase for one job, and then I do that one job, and then I'm like, well, now I have the tool for any time I need it in the future, and it, I almost never need them in the future. The only thing I use regularly is the uh, Phillips head screwdriver. <laughs> and even then, it's kind of like a generic sized one, and I just kind of use it for screws, both bigger and smaller than the size that it is, and then um, I just, you know, try not to strip them. <laughs> I'm being aggressively paired out. I must go. Thank you for this stream. Have a great day, Dorta. WD-40 probably playing sufficient. Yeah, I used to... Um, I used to use it to lubricate door hinges to make them not squeak. And I feel like it worked pretty well. And then somebody in stream told me that I was doing it wrong. And I don't even know if that's true, but it like stuck with me. This was years ago, mind you. Um, it's funny the things that, that latch into your memory as a streamer. Like, I can stream for a day and absorb like a third of chat and then some of the rest of it somehow despite the fact that it's not going that fast some of it just doesn't even compute doesn't even hit the eyeballs and then other things i will randomly read offhandedly and they'll just like set up camp in my brain and stay there for like the rest of my life <laughs> and it's like completely arbitrary it's not even like the the negative thing like early on in content creation it's pretty normal for negative pieces of criticism to get stuck with you um, it's kind of a natural human brain thing to do, as annoying as it is. So sometimes you'll like, you know, you'll brush off a lot of positive comments, but one person will say something mean and you'll like ruminate on that forever. And it's not even that. It's like random things. <laughs> I mean, maybe it was negative. Maybe I felt really, um, I don't know, patronized or something that I was using WD-40 wrong. <laughs> Dad logic at its finest, the reason most dads will have an excessive amount of tools. <laughs> hmm. Yeah. There is like some allure to the fantasy of having the tool bench or wherever where all of those tools are like organized and all laid out nicely so that when a need arises, you have the correct tool for it ready to go. I've never had that for like a hand like handy work around the house tools, but I have at points in my life had that set up basically for consumer tech tools where if I needed like an adapter or a cable or like a little camera or a microphone or largely adapters and cables but um oh I got elders gloves with the eagle I can sell those six inch six stamp yeah so I don't need to wear them but I can certainly sell them 
I had a uh, all of my various all of my various bits and bobs all like organized and laid out and cable wrapped and it's like well we have the USB C and we have the micro USB and we have the mini USB and we have the full size USB and we have the USB B and we have the SD card and we have the micro SD card and we have the adapters that take this to that and that to this and I had just kind of accumulated so many of those little things over the years and I had them all organized and it was I was able to I don't know. It shouldn't be that challenging to like make all the things talk to each other, but sometimes you just need the need the thingies. <sighs> Unfortunate end of that path is having so many tools, you can't find the ones you need, so you have to buy another one. That is heartbreaking. <laughs> That's no good. <sighs> I think what I need one day, if I ever have a house that has like jobs that need doing around the house, is I just need to find the world's best handy person who's just like really reliable and easy to talk to and, you know, doesn't stress me out to work with them. And then just uh, just get them to do it all. <laughs> just pay them for everything, it'll be great. It'll do a much better job than me trying to do it on my own and then causing a bunch of property damage. So I wound up with three screwdriver sets. The thing that was, that's been irrationally bumming me out, and I mean irrationally, is the fact that sometimes I go to what I call house jail which is where I am stuck on the couch of my laptop looking at real estate listings um, of houses. Sometimes that I can kind of afford, sometimes that I can't afford. Sometimes different places in the middle, kind of daydreaming. I have this um, maladaptive idea that if I just find the one that I really want that I can't afford, it's going to make me want to work harder, and I think that's just a fantasy. But I'll go to house jail. And lately I've been kind of cranky that I can't find the perfect one. Despite the fact that I can't afford any of them. You know, it's even if I found the perfect one, I couldn't buy it. But I just want to know that they're out there, and even the ones that I can't afford, I like I, they don't feel right. <laughs> <sighs> Told you, not a real problem. Zillow is just Tinder for houses, and the exact same. My weakness is realtor.ca because it's the Canadian listings. And uh, I have seen a lot of them. I have looked at many. And I feel like last summer when I was looking at them a lot, right around before I started looking at dogs, which is right around before I got a dog, um, I was finding more houses that I thought, oh, you know, this would be perfect or I could work on this thing or like, I really love this yard. But I feel like it's been a mismatch between like, there'll be a house that I really like but I really don't like the outdoor space on it. Like, I don't like the, the lack of privacy or the yard. Or I really like the yard and the outdoor space, but the house I don't like so much. Or it's got, like, a weird, wonky, terrible kitchen or something. Or thirdly, you have that the outside space that's, that's quite nice, and then the house is quite nice, but it's in the middle of the wilderness, and it's, like, 45 minutes to drive to get groceries, and also you are on a septic system and a well, and, you know, you've got, like, a windmill for power. <laughs> um, I have yet to find... The Goldilocks house, which is good because I'm not moving. I don't, I can't, I, uh, I don't have that kind of money right now. But <laughs> I don't know why I need to know that it's out there. Use the dog word in present company behind your shoulder. Oh, she's, she's, she's learning. She's learning to live with them. They're, uh, she's not thrilled about it, but she's, um, she's being a real good sport. <laughs> He just wants to, he just wants to, to love her. He just wants to lick her and snuggle her and play with her. And he can do two of those three things. <laughs> what would working harder look like for you? Offering content skills to other creators, making more content yourself. Can't imagine you'd be interested in part-time customer service stuff again. The, the daydream about it usually involves making more content for myself. Um, but I've been wanting to and trying to do that for like... <laughs> eight years i think i made a satisfactory amount of content for the maybe first two three years and then um i burned out once and i've been i've it's been a mess ever since um for reasons that i've been unraveling oh um but yeah it seems like one of those things that's just like a really easy fix and then the more you try and do the easy fix the more you realize it's not that easy <laughs> it's not that straightforward <sighs> the real magic is House Sigma for Canadian listings. You can see all the historical data in red. Oh, that I've not heard of. I do sometimes check out check out the houses on BC Assessment to see what their property assessed value is. Because sometimes you see a house and you're like, are these people delusional? 
do they really think they're getting 1.4 mil for this place? It doesn't even have a bathroom. And then you look it up and you're just like, yeah, they are delusional. <laughs> that place is, uh, is a decommissioned mobile home. And they, um, they are, they are living in another reality. But then sometimes it's like, oh, you know, I see the property is worth a lot and the house isn't worth so much. Or like, there's an outbuilding that's adding a lot to that property value or whatever it is. <sighs> But yeah, I have a lot of notes about what it is that I would want because I feel like that's just like my next big dream slash my last big life step. I feel as if, if I buy a house and I can be comfortable there and, you know, like keep up with the mortgage and feel secure, there really isn't any further needs that I have that I'm looking like. And th that's my last life goal. You know, I guess retiring would be another one, but um, I don't plan to have children. I have a sufficient amount of pets. I don't plan to go back to school at this time. Everything else is kind of gravy. Um, and I mean, I'm young. There's, not, there's nothing that says I have to finish life right now, but... Um, I forgot where I was going with that. I feel like I had a happier ending that story. Listing will say build a new house. Yeah. Great attention developers. Amazing development opportunity. Location, location, location. Existing property holds little to no value. That, that kind of thing. Yeah. <laughs> nice to be done. Retire, be set. I'm only 25. I feel like it's one of those things that sounds nice. And if it actually happened to me, I would have a crisis. Um, I would... <laughs> if I actually got somehow successful enough, I would have a real important need to re-channel myself into something. Um, some kind of personal crusade or goal or development of some kind because I'm not wise enough to just exist and be happy. Um, I need something to be pursuing or wanting in order to to keep me going. So I think that getting everything that I wanted would probably not be a very good thing to have happen to me. <laughs> not like this, anyway. Ugh. I just... I want to know where I'm going. And I guess everybody wants to know where they're going. <laughs> and historically in my life, when I thought I knew where I was going, I did not. Um, I figured I had a plan and then it did not work out. And then I figured I had a different plan and then that plan did not work out. Um, so I guess maybe I'm just missing that. I'm trying to rebuild my plan. I'm trying to, I'm trying to reconstruct my, my, my dream future because I've, I've lost a couple of them. And uh, after... After one or two of those, you start to get a little shaky in the faith side. <laughs> Bought a house this summer. It feels like Rent 2.0. Yeah. Happy endings. Being able to put all your money towards things you want to do. Minus utilities. Once you stop doing stuff, you fall apart and become a bed sausage and die. Yeah, I do kind of wonder that, um, that if I did buy a house one day... I, it, it would depend on the financial situation in which I did it. And I'm hoping that I'm smart enough and have smart enough financial advisors to not get myself in over my head. But there is the risk that if it is not something that I can comfortably or easily afford, um, even taking into account fluctuating income, that you could have like a lot more anxiety because all of a sudden, you know, your your security could be taken from under you with changes that are like, that feel outside of your control. And at least with rent, like, you know, if if for whatever reason they raised the rent on these places to where I couldn't afford it or, like, something happened where I had to move, that would really suck. But I wouldn't be, you know, I would find a different place to rent. I would That would be horrible, but it would be possible. And I guess, you, you know, it's, it's the same thing with houses, but it's still... I have this fantasy of just, like, having a safe place to be where I can go back to no matter what. And uh, I don't know how realistic that actually is. The dream. I want to be bed sausage. Advocate for small houses. Easier to clean. Heat maintain. Reasoning can break down with families with kids. Yeah. Yeah. I can I can see the appeal for that. Especially the heating part. I do not want to be heating like a 2,500 square foot five bedroom house in the Canadian winter for, for two people and a cat and a dog. Hmm. Gorillas. How's my bag space doing? 23 bag slots remaining. 
these uh, rune cloth bags are really, really doing work. You can stay out and grind for a long time before they get full. I don't know. I think that security that I'm looking for is a fundamentally human thing to want, but it's also something that is fundamentally impossible to have because even, you know, there's, you can't control everything. You cannot control your entire environment or everything that happens in your life. There will always be factors and events and things outside of your control that can threaten your way of life, no matter how carefully you plan and, and whatever. Like maybe you plan and everything goes great. It's possible, it happens to some people, and maybe you plan and something crazy happens <laughs> and there's nothing that you can do about it. And I think that that having that, like it's good to be prepared and it's good to be smart and forward thinking, but um, that uh, illusion of total control and safety is very much an illusion. It's not something that anybody can really have properly. And if you think you have it, you're just kind of setting yourself up to have that ripped out from under you when, you know, your life gets upended by one thing or another. <laughs> hmm. I have a long-distance relationship. Big long-term goals. Us moving together. Partner and I bought a house about eight years ago. It's the best. Hmm. I like the idea of being able to to have stories happen in a place. You know, I I get very attached to the place that I live. I get very kind of... I like mundane things about it. I like to take pictures of the places that I've lived and just, you know... This is where I ate dinner, and this is where I watched TV, and this is where I, you know, put my glasses on the bedstand and stuff, and like the different apartments I've had and whatnot. And because I've had to move so many times, you don't really get to, to stay. I mean, maybe it helps keep things fresh and changing, but you don't really get to build up that history in one place. And I like the idea of building a lot of memories in one house, in one property, and especially like having the outside space that feels like your own little place to grow things and get to know the other things that live there um and for there to be you know different changing things that you can kind of like grow with and observe and be part of that sounds really nice i feel like i've been you know <laughs> closing books or torn out of movies halfway through like five different times and i just want to see how one of them ends <laughs> mm. I've been crazy things. Sometimes your 20 year old oven says, nope, won't work anymore. 800 plus dollar bill. Lovely seeing stories and photos and possessions people have if they live somewhere a long time. I do think that if I did live in one place for 20, 30 years, that 20, 30 years would go very fast. I would get very comfy. I would spend a lot of time, you know, like reading and crafting and, you know, watching movies and eating food and, you know, living life. And it will go even faster. But I think I, I have this idea that comfiness makes my time perceived to go faster. Especially if I spend a lot of that time consuming and not creating. Nothing says that you can't live somewhere and create. But I think if I have an idea that I'm going to have a writing room and write novels from my new house in the balcony overlooking the veranda, I think that I've got another thing coming. <laughs> that sounds like the kind of thing people tell themselves and then they get it and then they're like, but I'm busy. <laughs> I don't feel like it today. I'm all stressed and my abs are sore from the sit-ups. <laughs> You'll never be nostalgic for something you have? I suppose not, but there's similar there's similar feelings that are in the same same category. I've had Miss Kira. Um, I've lived with Miss Kira for a long time and I still feel the, the warm, fuzzy, happy, snuggly feelings every time because she's she's my girl. <laughs> Probably inheriting the family house? Wow. Need some work, totally wouldn't have it in me to sell it or rent it out. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm. I feel that way about places that come with uh, like suites or outbuildings where they they expect you know, they call them mortgage helpers or in law suites or whatnot, and they're like, You can you can rent this place out and you can earn some extra income and I am just not the right person to be a landlord on my own property or really anybody else's property. But it's even if you did it all right, it would still, I think, stress me out immeasurably. 
I could see having like my parents live there um, or have it be like a like a home office sort of outbuilding situation but I don't know about I don't know about paying tenants you better be a real writer to do that a contact did got herself a little island home in BC oh if if by island home you mean like the like the the little islands um that's a that's a pretty big that's a pretty big commitment to the quiet life that is a fairy ride if you want to get back to civilization <laughs> not that they don't have like shops and stuff but it depends on which island you're on I see homes listed sometimes in like Pender Island or Main Island or Galliano Island or whatnot or even um Salt Springs a little bit bigger but uh I just uh I don't know I want I want things that could be easy to be easy so that I have more energy left to deal with things that I find to be difficult and I feel like really small island living as romantic as it is probably makes a lot of easy things more difficult and maybe you rise to that challenge or maybe you just get very stressed <laughs> I hope that one day I have a yard with a big tree in it. And it's okay if the tree's really messy. You know, it can it can drop leaves or fir cones or branches or whatnot. That's okay. I wanna have some compost piles. I wanna see some birdies. I want to see what the garden and the yard looks like in all the different seasons and weathers and times of day. I don't think I'm ever going to afford one of these places that's like waterfront views, but the fantasy of having them is that you get to see, you know, the, the water or the beach, not just like in the middle of the afternoon when you would go visit it, but like first thing in the morning or like during a storm in the evening or like all kinds of times when you wouldn't normally go, you could just see it at your window and see the, uh, the animals and the weather and the, the water. Plus, if you have a place that's near water, you might see eagles. 1950s ranch style on a half an acre. Big trees, nice big garden. That sounds magical. <laughs> that sounds wonderful. Mm. I only have four bars left until level 35. What am I going to do with my talents? We finally got five points into Unholy Power. We need to spend two more talent points before we can start to get Master Demonologist, which will, with the Voidwalker, reduce both my and the Voidwalker's physical damage taken by 2% per point, which is pretty good. Can't do that yet, though. We need to put a few more points in, so. <sighs> I either increase his maximum mana a little bit, or I can buff up my Imp. Because I'm, I'm not too fussed about Health Funnel. Probably his maximum mana, although is he really ooming? He's not really ooming. Not the way that I'm playing him right now. He he has the capacity to if I multi pull. Have you seen the lighthouse? Which lighthouse? I have seen some lighthouses. There's one in Oregon. I wanna say Newport ish. There's one Fort Rod. Something something birds. Oh, the movie The Lighthouse. Oh. No. What's up, Hazel? Hello! I have a feeling. What's your feeling? Feel your feelings. <sighs> We're having a cozy grind day. Still doing virtual tickets, haven't heard anything about them yet. I have not heard anything either, but I would very much expect them to sell some kind of package to at least give the digital goodies. Oh, that you might not have seen the lighthouse. Yeah, no, I certainly haven't. What kind of movie is it? How's it going? Finally have a break my seminar, I can watch for a bit. It's going pretty good. I'm having a nice cozy, uh, nice cozy hardcore wow day. My warlock is level 34 and 82%. I have some rested. We've just been killing beasts and skinning and getting the, the odd green here and there. Lots of leather. I got 47 heavy leather. I got 51 medium leather. That's nice. Nice leveling going on. Yeah. Nice, nice and comfy. Nothing too scary, really. <laughs> I 
I don't feel like today is my day to live on the edge. Although sometimes that's how they get you. I would love to at least get to 35 today. Feeling I might not win big on the prediction today. You're not dying quickly enough. Tiger meat's good for cooking. Yeah, I was noticing that the tigers and the raptor meat as well both have a, a pretty decent auction house value. I made myself a nice batch of jungle stew, so I've got my eight stamp food set up for the moment. Um, I'm probably going to try and sell a little bit of the meat directly and then a little bit of the um, the cooked food to see if I can make a profit off of that. I don't really know what I'm saving up gold for. I guess just gear. And at 30... There's a wand that I... Another wand. I'm using a blue quality wand that I equipped at 29. There's another one that I can get. And I forget when I can put it on. Oh, I guess it just depends on what's on the auction. There's a couple of blue ones. There's Jaina's fire starter. There's some kind of like an earthy one. Stew's great. You get two stew for one meat. Yeah, but also two apples and a water, but they are pretty cheap. Um, don't be fussy about your first house. Look for something with good resale value. I think that's really good advice for a lot of people. Um, I think that I have... That's really good advice for a lot of people. <laughs> Thank you. Mm. About that whole milk. <sighs> I'm on the organic milk train. Not because I'm typically very fussy about organic products, but because it's the only milk that I've been buying that's not been spoiled when I open it. <sighs> and it's, it's nice. Works good. Makes a nice cup of tea. Sometimes you need a nice cup of tea. My go-to whenever we have controversial topics. Is it the whole milk or are you referring to like raw milk? Because that's one that, I don't know if anybody actually like gets angry about it, but that's one that is uh, a bit divisive between people. I want to say North America versus Europe. North America tends to hyper pasteurize our dairy products and it can be even illegal to consume them directly. And then it's like a whole thing. Milk straight from the cow. Yeah, that's the that's that's the fiery topic. I have not. <sighs> you are right. I mean raw milk. Mhm. Mm yeah, I have not. I was looking through a cookbook, looking for things to make, and this cookbook author uses a lot of avocados, which is great. I like avocados. It's just. I wonder if they cost as much where she lives. I think maybe this cookbook author is in like California and maybe they have cheaper avocados there. Cause I think if she had to pay like three to $4 an avocado, she wouldn't just be blending one up to make a dressing. <laughs> I have a tendency to read cookbook recipes and then be like, oh, this one's really good. This recipe looks really tasty. This looks like a lot like something that I already make. Except they do it with this thing and this thing and this thing. Maybe I should try that. Except that I don't have that other thing they do differently. And then also this thing seems like it would be kind of expensive to get. And I don't really know where I would buy this thing. But I have these things already. So what if I just made the same thing that I already make and have been making for years that this recipe reminded me of that it's not. <laughs> made my favorite thing yesterday. My new favorite thing I made all year, I should say. What is your new favorite thing that you have made all year? California avocados are on everything. I like them a lot. And sometimes I can get them on sale. Um, sometimes I can get them on sale. If I can get them, if I can get the price to approximately one Canadian dollar per avocado, I will typically purchase a couple of them. Um, Cause I, I like them a lot, but <laughs> I don't really go above the $1 per avocado. So you got to wait for the sale. Hmm. I think maybe my dots. Oh, there's a murloc there. Where did you come from? You're level 35. I'm gonna put a recklessness curse up. 
Thai peanut sauce stir fry it was fantastic. Ah, I see, I see. Something pushed them to two to three each in the Washington DC area recently. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Getting more locked. Poor Hellgrave's getting just decked over here. It's good to have his um, health bar above his head so I notice when he's been brutalized. What do I need up here? Oh, the paw of Sindal. That's scary. I didn't know Sindal could spawn up here. I mean, what if I could just take it? I bet I could take Sindal if uh, it was a single pull with no ads. Twenty-four for seventy recently. Avocados? Purchasing seventy avocados at once. Is this like a wholesale thing, like for retailers or <laughs> I'm trying to imagine filling up like my, my shopping bags. Seventy avocados. It's a lot of guac. <laughs> yeah. You could make a lot of a lot of avocado dressing from that. <laughs> Holy guacamole. <laughs> My favorite thing to do with avocados lately is either just on toast with like a fried egg and some hot sauce or um, on like a veggie burger. <laughs> That's it. I'm not very imaginative. They're just really yummy. <sighs> not for all the time, but sometimes a treat. One bag of milk. Bag of milk. One milk, one bread. 70 avocados. Normal haul. <laughs> Is milk bagged in Germany? Or is this another Canadian thing? Because <laughs> I feel like we've had that conversation. I don't have bagged milk here. Mm. Although they've started selling it in glass bottles again, and I don't know how I feel about that. It's, um, I understand wanting to move away from plastic, but my understanding is that glass is more expensive to recycle and heavier to transport. Um, also, I don't know, they don't hold very much milk. <sighs> Friend has bagged milk in Edmonton. Yeah, I think it can be a Canadian thing. It's just not universally Canadian. I've never in my life seen a bag of milk and um, I'm a BC, Victoria BC. Tetra Pak kind of carton. Mm. Delighted to find a bag of milk in a German store recently. Mm. What is your opinion? on where am i going with this <laughs> hang on let me let me straighten out where i'm going with this before i just ask you things uh i um have elected to switch vacuum brands for my next vacuum and i have already committed so this is not an open shopping question i have already purchased something but i got on high recommendation from a variety of sources because i went kind of deep down the rabbit hole I've decided to try a Miel vacuum. I don't know if that's how it's pronounced, but I understand it's a German brand. And I guess my question is, if it has a good reputation in Germany, or if it's one of those things that's like, foreigners think they're really cool because they're German, but then like, there are better things that are less flashy and famous on the home front. Because um, in a lot of reviews, a lot of people were like, I can respect this good German engineering, and I, I can also respect good German engineering, but I don't know if it's like, it seems like they're building their brand on that a lot, and I wanted to know if it was warranted, I suppose. <sighs> Trillion Dollar Dyson died. <sighs> it's, uh, it is no longer keeping up with the challenges that it is, that it is being faced with, I would say. Mm. Pretty well regarded. Yeah, I wanted to know how they were thought of in Germany specifically. Um, service they offer alone really i heard that it was very bad <laughs> that was one of the things that at least in the north american reviews people were like listen this thing's great but the customer service is hideous they will not respond to you there was an advert in spain where a father would catch his daughter with a guy the guy would say something in german oh i see i i, I feel like i know where this is going they're epic I'll find out. I've also swapped from, um, I had been previously using a cordless stick vac, which I liked very, very much. 
Um, the trouble with it is that the the capacity on the canister is not very high. It's like a half a liter. And when you have fluffy dog hair, it fills up like immediately, even with a really small square footage. So you're emptying it like seven to ten times per vacuum, which is just ridiculous. Um, so I'm trying out, or I'm going to eventually when it arrives. And I'm excited about this because I'm 31 and I've got my priorities straight. A non-cordless canister style vacuum. I am hoping for more um power and i'm hoping for i mean not hoping for i i checked it has a larger canister capacity last forever parents said all things meow i am german i hope it lasts me a very long time <laughs> i'm hopeful i'm optimistic i'll just be happier if it's quieter the cat hates the the cat hates the dyson i miss muffin although she also hates like the kitchen fan so it's not like she's uh i, I think she's just against appliances <laughs> Don't think I've ever heard someone from Germany trash a German brand except vo v v Voidwalker, not Voidwalker, Volkswagen. <laughs> Man, those German vo those ger German Voidwalkers just letting people down. Yeah, she is against. She is anti noise. <laughs> she doesn't even like the broom. I as some on some occasions when the cat has been especially in need of um in need of a nice quiet space and I needed to clean, I have sometimes opted to sweep my home rather than vacuum it. And she doesn't even like the broom if she can, if she hears it, if it gets too close to her. And it's a broom. It's not noisy. Maybe she's against cleaning. I'm getting all of her, her delicious hair off the floor. I don't know. <laughs> Made a no more lock on the EU server named Hazel in your honor. Best of luck to you. You want pronunciation pointers again to be more authentically German? I will take them. I may me knowingly not use them though. Because I feel I have this perhaps misguided idea that pronouncing it correctly within North America may make me look pretentious. <laughs> uh, but go for it. How would it be said? How would how would, how would I how would I say that properly? Um, she just loves the dust. <laughs> but it makes her sneeze. She sneezes like nine times in a row when she has to sneeze. Mm. I have specifically wondered how it's pronounced. Yeah, I have no no idea how you would go about it. I got a stone cutter, two-hander sword, agi spirit of the wolf. Interesting. We got 18 bag slots left. Tell them your German friends told you to see more cosmopolitan. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> Kitty, am I cosmopolitan? Sometimes I feel glamorous. When do I feel glamorous? When I put on my outside pants to go to the dog park? <laughs> How do you pronounce the last E? So you do pronounce the last E then. But like an extra, not me. Miela. Miele. Miela. <laughs> Miele. Two syllables? Four syllables. Supercalifragilisticexpialidocious. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't have guessed that. German is somehow one of the languages that I never really came across or learned anything of. I think that I would know more words in in most other languages before German. <laughs> and by more, I mean like one or two, like the one or two that you pick up just like from media. I'm trying to think of any... German word that I would have known. I guess there's Gesundheit. <laughs> Kickermeister. <sighs> I know it's a brand of alcohol. I don't actually know what it means. English does absorb some naturally. That's probably true. Which words do I say that, that are from German? Kindergarten. Kindergarten, that's true. That is that is a common one. Kaput. So 
Somebody gave me a really, 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 really big fortitude buff. I have 42 extra stamina. Maybe I should go do something cool. <laughs> Type of alcohol? Only one brand that makes it? Oh, I see. I remember it wasn't very good. <laughs> I d or no, sorry, I shouldn't. Uh, that's 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 unkind of me. I didn't like it very much. That's a that's a better thing to say. I was not a fan of Jaeger whenever I would drink it. Um, partly because I was 19 and drinking it mixed with, I'm pretty sure, an energy drink. Jaeger bombs, not very nice. Um, not a great thing to do to your body. It's an herbal liquor, not for everyone. But see, I enjoy gin, which is got kind of... I like that gin tastes... Like a nice gin tastes kind of botanical. I can I can get that. <laughs> but yeah, maybe I just need to try it again. <laughs> Early 2000s, yeah. <sighs> but yeah, I remember I remember being um, un displeased with it when it was purchased for me on my birthday. Uh, tips for starting hardcore. <sighs> ah, tips for hardcore. Hmm... I think you just kind of got to play to get a feel for what you can and can't do. <sighs> take risks, take, do things very conservatively, you know, like take things one mob at a time. And then when you're comfy with that, you know, then you can maybe look into higher level areas. But until you've got a feel for what your character is up for, be very cautious um, anywhere that's dense. So like camps, caves, um, anywhere where you've got a bunch of mobs on top of each other can get very dangerous very fast because things can and will respawn right on top of you. Um, it's worth sometimes taking a little read through the Wowhead guide for your class, or just the Wowhead hardcore guide to get a feel for how leashing mechanics work and stuff like that, but I don't know, have fun. <laughs> Make use of the auction house if you if you feel like it. It will help you out a lot to be able to um, buy buy good gear for your level. Stamina is great. On the topic, schnapps is also a German word used in English. All of these are words that I feel like I have never known how to pronounce even when they were in English. Uh-oh, tigers. Uh, do you think it's cheesy to show up with a single rose for a girl on the first date? Uh, I think it's it's cute. It's old-fashioned a little bit. Um, it probably will depend very much on who your date is with. Some people will probably find that really charming, and some people might find that to be too much, and that's... You gotta, you gotta know your date. <laughs> That is a theme with um, people, women and also people, though, is that they're all individual and they like different things. <laughs> um, bring one. If she doesn't like it, tell them it's ironic. <laughs> oh, man. You bring the flower, and then if she doesn't like it, um, then tell her that it's a gift for her compost so that she can give back to the Earth Mother. And then if she doesn't like that, then, um, you know, <laughs> you just keep fishing for reframes until you find one that hits. <laughs> this is so that you can give it back to me to, to, because I like flowers, and I didn't know if you would bring one for me. <laughs> here, I didn't want you to mess this up, so here, give this back. Bring her a potato. <sighs> that sounds like the kind of thing that would have gone really well with me in my younger years. Um, like if I was like 17 and going on like a date with somebody from school. And if they brought me a potato, I would have thought that was very funny at the time. Nowadays, I would just be like, you want me to cook this or? Try St. Hubertus, doesn't have a bad reputation, or does have a bad reputation amongst my friends. I think I'm pretty much set on the alcohol and liquor categories of my life. I'm I'm okay. Um, I am at a point where I figured out what I like, I figured out a lot of what I don't like, and I have figured out that the less I drink, the healthier I will be just in general, so there's no urge for me to fill in more areas of my life with drinking. <laughs> I like, um, like I said, gin's nice. Um, whiskey, like a good whiskey can be very nice sometimes, but in very small quantities. Otherwise, I'm just going to get blasted. Mm. You would love the reasoning for the potato. I will find it. I promise it is good. All right. Uh, wish we could drink just a bit every day, but I can't. Yeah. 
there's enough things in my life that I need more or that are more important to me that are bad for my health. I feel like I can save some health points by not drinking or smoking. Hmm. It is a link. Ah, you're uh, you're out of luck. <laughs> Hi, kitty cat. You want to come up and see me? We're farming tigers. Oh, I leveled! Congratulations to me! Don't die. <laughs> kind of mess. Uh, Logitech G600. I like them very much. They're great. They're good stuff. Soberish babe squad. Yeah. I am very lucky in that my family and also the social circles that I have been part of in my life haven't really normalized drinking, so I didn't get into a habit of doing it all the time. Um, there would be alcohol at events, but it was completely normal to either partake or not partake, and it's not... No one's ever really given me a hard time for not drinking, and I appreciate that. Because um, I'm, I don't know, flimsy and... <laughs> Especially when I was younger, probably would have been very susceptible to peer pressure, and I was just lucky that none of my peers ever pressured me. How is Miss Kira today? Miss Kira, how are you doing today? Are you getting cozy? <laughs> you warm? Being friends with people who work as... Actually, I don't know how to say that. Sommeliers? Sommeliers? Fun and games till they discover you can't stand wine. I think wine's nice and I can have a little bit of it, um, but typically it will... Like a, like a proper glass of wine will give me a headache and... Um, I would usually rather just have a little bit of whiskey. Latter. French and fancy. Good one, my ear. You can't drink. Mm -hmm. <sighs> yeah, I think drinking's overrated. I think um, I'm not completely against it, but I think it, on average, causes more harm than it solves. It's very tempting when you have anxiety to use alcohol to smooth over your social anxiety in areas where you're uncomfortable. Um, more so parties than job interviews. And uh, it's not your not your best coping strategy. <laughs> Has Taco been with Cat? He's good. He's learning to be polite. He is learning to give her space. They're still not. They're on supervised visits only. They are not like loose with each other at this time. He's been he's been having some supervised visits to her to the back rooms and just kind of getting him used to everything. So it's not so crazy and exciting. <sighs> but it's hard because he is very excited. He is. He is going on five months old. He'll be five months old next week, I think. And uh, he is, he is, I call him Hurricane Moose because he is, uh, he is the nuclear fusion of energy. He's just so excited when he's excited. Um, and he settles down really well and he listens pretty good and he's, um, he's learning his commands nicely. It's very important to get him lots of exercise and to give him lots to think about and do and sniff and puzzles and all that. And that all helps a lot. But I think that um, it's just going to take him some time to learn to be very chill with the cat so that she can be chill. Kind of breed a dog, is it? So, <laughs> I uh, he's a mixed breed dog. He has, they identified 14 different breeds in him. Um, the top three being German Shepherd, Alaskan Malamute, and then Husky. But uh, I think those three things combined are still less than less than half of less than half of his makeup. Which level is Moose? <laughs> There's a BDG video to find out. Oh, I feel like I've seen or I've heard of that. It might be the only one I didn't watch. <laughs> Good luck. Thanks. He was a, uh, what is it? 7% Australian cattle dog as well. I sent the list of the breeds that he was made up of to one of my friends last night. And they were like, whoa, all of these things are really high energy. And I was like looking at the list and I was like, oh yeah, <laughs> I guess they are. <laughs> Ay. <laughs> he's a good boy. Totally looks shepherd. He really does. People people ask if he's like a purebred German shepherd and he is he is less than a quarter German shepherd. But he's oh I should be careful with his murlocs. That's a dangerous place to be. He's really sweet. He's a wonderful buddy. He is he is my he is my my floof. I call him um you know how nicknames for pets kind of happen organically. Like, you'll just start calling your cat or your dog, like, a thing. Um, I've started calling my puppy Bun-Bun. And I don't really know why, because he doesn't really share any characteristics with a rabbit. He has much different fur. He's much bigger. He's not a rabbit. He's a puppy dog. But I call him Bun-Bun. <laughs> Alright, Bun-Bun. Let's go to... It's time for bed. 
bun bun want breakfast? <laughs> I don't know what's up with that. And then, of course, sometimes it starts to bleed over to the kitty cat. And she's arguably more rabbit-like. But she has lots of nicknames. <laughs> uh, what company? I did Wisdom Panel. We did Wisdom Panel. There's lots of different ones, but... It should, I should also <laughs> be pretty clear. It's mostly just... It's just a vanity thing. It's just kind of for fun. It is a optional expense. It's not something anybody like needs to do for their dog or anything. Hmm. They did screen for genetic markers for different genetically inheritable um, disorders and diseases and found that he was clear for the ones that he would have been at risk for, which is nice. So, um, you know, appreciate that. <laughs> That's the one I did. I call my chocolate lab squishy, but she is pretty squishy, so it works. Dog was named Finley. Didn't stop us from calling him Sweetie Pie Honey Bunches of Oats Boys. <laughs> I've called Moose Honey Bunches of Oats too, actually. <laughs> I've that's a it's a good one. <sighs> My pet's names become baby words too. No idea why. What's your um What's your favorite pet name for your cat? <laughs> why did I have this? Did you at one point say that you called your cat Mister Cat, or did I just dream that? And Staffy Beagle Boxer Lab plus others. Sister's Red Lab is the king of puppy eyes, even at two years old. I call my cat Gordiborous. Gordiborous. <laughs> I'm kind of curious if when he's fully grown, if Moose's ears are going to stand straight up and be pointy. Or if they're going to still have a little bit of flop to them. Because right now they're very floppy. And, you know, he's a puppy. So it's normal for the ears to not stand straight up yet. And the shepherd, malamute, and husky in him would indicate pointy up ears. But he also has a decent amount of um, pit bull, staffy, and labrador in him. And those tend to have the floppier ears. So it's kind of an open question. <laughs> I'm betting on them standing up. I think they probably will too, but it would be very funny if they were still a little bit floppy because as much as I'm willing to accept whatever dog he grows up to be, I kind of love his floppy ears. One of each. <laughs> yeah, one up, one floppy ear. He's really cute. I am almost out of rested. That seems like a good goal to have for the day. Getting, getting A's holes rested clear. Also, I never spent my talent point. That's no good. Although I think it's kind of a not very exciting talent point. Hmm. Socializing an adult cat and a kitten. Kitten Kitty runs up to the cat, gets hissed at. Kitty doesn't care, hissing does nothing. Kitty's hissed at Moose once or twice when he's gotten too close to her space. And he just kind of looks at her like, that's a funny sound. <laughs> I wonder what that means. Um, but then we, we get him to back up and give her a little time out and it works good. He's learning with other dogs at the park when how to uh, how to take the go away cues. He's pretty good at it, which I appreciate. He um, he speaks dog, which I I was a little worried about, but he's doing good at taking cues from other dogs and giving them back if needed. He likes to wrestle. His favorite move when he's playing with other dogs is to throw himself on the ground and lay in his back and get chewed on. Um, it's a situation he gets himself into consistently. <laughs> He has one dog in particular that he loves to wrestle with and she, the other dog, always wins and Moose is just like having the happiest time of his life. He loves it. Yeah, he's pretty He's pretty naturally um, naturally submissive. It's going to be interesting how that works when he's big because I think he's getting pretty big. <sighs> Where am I going? Oh yeah, spending talent points. Oh yeah, I guess I have these ones to look at too. So I could, I'm certainly not improving subjugate demon. I'm eventually going to need the demonic sacrifice thing, but like, I don't think I'm actually going to sacrifice my demon. It's just so I can get soul link later on. And that's another, I'm another seven levels away from that. And then fire stones, I haven't even trained. Mm. I think I'm going to go for, I mean, if it's like a non-issue point anyways. You know what? I'm going to leave it alone for now, actually. I'm going to not spend that talent point because it's not going to make a big difference to me right now, regardless. And I want to read more about Firestones and figure out a more a better understanding of exactly what's going on with those. 
larger, younger dog would self-handicap when playing with our older, slower beagle. Very cute. Aww. Hmm. They told us at puppy class that when a puppy is, like, licking the mouth of another dog, it's their way of signaling to the other dog, please be calm with me. Uh, please, you know, please be chill. And he most likes to start his his visits to the park and all of his friends by going around to each of the different dogs and licking all of them in the mouth, telling all of them to please play calmly with me. But he does it while bursting with energy and tearing around the park and leaping over and crawling under and he um he's a very acrobatic dog <laughs> at this time he's just, he's a puppy so he's got the he's got the puppy zoomies but it's really funny that he'll just apparently go you know entreat all of the other dogs to please be calm with me and then he'll just do it while tearing around at mock speed mr kitty kitty meow face thank you for the 30 month reset hey hazel and fellow nutters hmm Hmm. Oh, should I go check out Raptor Ridge? We're 14 bags full of food. We got more. We got more space to grind. I kind of what I'd like to do here is grind up to until my rested's gone, and then maybe go back to town and sort out my bags. What are you guys talking about? Liquor? <laughs> Liquor rolls? I know in, in America they vary a lot by state. <sighs> that troll's in my way. How many inch leather do we have? 67 heavy leather and then 72 medium leather. I'm happy with that. I don't know if these raptor hides are worth anything. I think I basically those are basically vendor trash. <laughs> Hazel, what is your favorite gachi song? What is a gachi song? to go. Thank you for the three month reset. Hello. <laughs> Nationwide USA emergency test. Did scare me. It's good that it's working. <laughs> Did we all just get fit? Happy emergency alert test day to those who celebrate. Oh man. Love your haircut, still pink? Well, thank you. Yeah, I've been enjoying it. So these are like 33. The one problem with grinding out here is there's not really a lot of mining. I really liked, and I'm too high level for it now, but I really liked that rafter cave in wetlands. Because it was the perfect combination of, like, mobs that I could farm for experience and I could skin them and there was mining nodes everywhere. I was hoping that I would be finding more mining nodes up on the ridges and stuff, but I haven't been getting a whole lot of ore out here. I think at some point... I'm 35 now, so it wouldn't be out of hand for me to explore the early areas of both Desolus and Arathi Highlands. Not necessarily to, you know, set up camp forever, but just to kind of poke around and get a feel for it and see if there's any grinding spots that I like. Doing the Eastern Kingdom Dragon Riding Races, my level 38 Void Elf Hunter. Didn't know I could do that. That's kind of cool. I didn't know you could do that either. Desolus could be spooky. I haven't um, been in old Desolus since, like, <laughs> Cataclysm. I never made it there on Classic when I replayed it. And I know they changed Desolus a lot in the Cataclysm. 
All right, we have exhausted our rested experience. We have made it 10% of our way into level 35, which makes us only five levels left to go before mount level. I need to just, I mean, I'm, I'm having a lot of fun bouncing around between different low level characters, but part of me just wants to like commit to the lock for a week or so. Just, I want to get, <laughs> I want to mount in hardcore. That was kind of my, my first level goal. I guess my first level goal was level 10. <laughs> I'd like to get to 60, but 40 is a lot more reasonable. Caves and hills bred foothills is fun. Uh, watch the line for blood scum. I think I'll do some some amount of that, yeah. Uh, certainly the keynote, anyways. Thanks for your professions guide. Since farming alchemy the last few months, I'm now making hundreds of thousands every day. Holy smokes, congrats! I'm really glad it's working for you. Hmm. No committing. Makes you overconfident. And you die. Uh, in the <laughs> in the ever ever uh, evergreen words of Demi Lovato what's wrong with being confident <laughs> except for the whole death thing uh, big wow expansion announcement they would probably do a like a very high level um, note about it in the keynote um, maybe show a cinematic maybe say the name of it but then they would put all the details including like major feature details typically for the wow announcement section um so quite a hammer of the monkey that's a main-handed agi stand mace interesting planning on doing the lock mount quest heard they can be risky no first-hand experience i also have no idea what's going on with it i will have to poke around and find out i suppose um you know Wow, head the names of them or something when I get to that point. I just hope it's going to be called Dwarf Dig. <laughs> I would, uh, I would enjoy that a lot, actually. <laughs> First place kind of ever so excited. Nice. You ever think they'd go through update the zones they redid in Kata? They talked about that in one of the interviews. I don't remember what they said. <laughs> But somebody asked that in an, in an interview in one of the recent rounds of it. They've definitely mentioned it. Level 40 quest is boring, you just go talk to the guy in Ratchet? Mm. Yeah, at level 60 I'm not too worried. If I get to 60, I don't even need the faster amount because I'm going to be done. Um, I'm not playing at 60, I'm getting to 60, if, if that. that. That would be my end goal. So the level 40 mount's really the only one I'm planning to get on any of the characters, I think. <sighs> it's hard to stop farming. How much are the heavy leather worth? Two silver per? It's not too bad. I'm at 29 gold. I think it's time to start thinking about about town. <laughs> Let's head back. I have not done any dungeons, no. I don't plan to. The only way I would ever do dungeons is if there was a whole group of uh, like my guildies that were going to play and we were all going to level together. I would do dungeons in a, in a setup like that, but I, uh, I don't have any real interest in pugging them. It's a main hand mace of the monkey. I guess I'll post it once. Mm. The raptor hides. The fangs I think somebody needs. Oh yeah, and then I wanted um I wanted to buy some spices. Some hot spices and make some amount of roast raptor and then refreshing spring water to make some amount of jungle stew. So. Yeah, we can do seven of those and then sell the rest of the tiger meat directly. And then maybe ten of those. Be careful. And then I need a cooking fire. I'm just glad that I stayed up there and used most of that priest buff. <laughs> it was pretty good. 
I never remember where I like to cook in Stormwind. I know that sometimes there are people put campfires on the ground. Yeah, <laughs> sometimes people put campfires on the ground. Oh yeah, I also have regular raptor eggs. I might be able to sell those directly for... Or you can also like cook them with the hot spices and then vendor it for more. Like the one silver you get for vendoring it is more than what you would get for vendoring the egg and buying the spices or not buying the spices. Dungeon's a good way to die. Ultimate is the only one that's been sketchy for me. Yeah, I think that dungeons are a bit safer than they're made out to be. It's just, um... <sighs> I like, um, I like mostly playing solo. Cooking trainer in the Indial district, then I can train and cook. I think I need to get to Tenaris if I want to get any more cooking training. I'm capped at 225. It kind of sucks burning potential skill-ups like this, but it is what it is. <laughs> So if I have, how much jungle stew do I have on me? 29. Maybe I'll sell off the extra nine. <laughs> and then all of the roast raptor. Two stacks of five of those. 76. It's got an 11 silver deposit, man. I don't know about that. Same thing with the Agi Spirit Sword. I don't think so. I think I'm going to vendor both of those. It vendors for 92 silver all by itself. And the stats just aren't good enough on it. This, on the other hand, of the Eagle, um, I'm going to actually ask for, like, a Colt. Because <laughs> there's none of those up right now. And those are those are decent. Um, 75. Yeah, that's fine. Oh, what else are we seeing? One extra apple? You, you can't buy the apples in every town. Not every town has a fruit seller, so sometimes people will actually buy those. I bought some. Mystery meat. Raptor flesh. Tiger meat. Medium leather. 88 average. I think over the course of like a whole day, it'll get back to at least 80, 84. Copper has inflated crazily, which makes it really nice when you're starting a fresh character if they have mining. You can afford all kinds of your early training and like a set of linen bags and stuff for just from mining a couple nodes of copper. Super, super value. Mm. Oh yeah, that's nice. Mm, cloth I'm going to hold off on. And then those I think I'm just going to vendor. <sighs> uh, Addy bags is the, is the inventory mod. It's definitely not how bags look by default in classic. That would, well it's a little, little too nice. All right. So the sword and the mace are both going to go. I'm going to actually cook the... I need 18 hot spices. I'm actually going to cook the omelets for, for the profit. Is it the same thing with the gumbo? It sells for one silver. 36 and 25. Yeah, it is actually. So I need another five. Looking for something specific? Sometimes even, even when you're buying extra mats, it is more profitable to cook a, cook a meat before you vendor it. Uh, yes, Auctionator is a standalone add-on. Wondering why they never changed it from that if that was the OG. Yeah. Have a way to sell junk instantly. I don't think I don't know if Adibags does that, but Leatrix Plus can. I have Leatrix auto selling junk for me. I like it a lot for classic. It does a lot of useful stuff. Hmm. Hellgrave lives another day. So I have 33 going on 34 gold. I want to check and see. I'm not saving up gold for amount, so I can really spend gold as much as I need to on gear. Now that I'm 35, I want to take a look at weapons in particular. 
Oh, someone's buying that heavy leather already. I love auctioning things in the same character that I play all the time instead of using a bank hole because I really like seeing in my chat log when something sells. I get a, I get a big kick out of that. I want to go shopping. My staff also is six levels old, but it's an acrobatic staff of stamina, and it's just hard to replace a two-hander with 14 stam on it. So I was going to vendor these. Oh, I forgot to sell some of the extra jungles, too. I was going to vendor these. Have a good one. Use scrap for selling junk across all versions. Forged on two frost food bags and a 28 slot leather working bag for my druid today. Very nice. I want weapons, usable, wands, and then I sort by highest level. So I'm in the level range for a greater mystic wand, but it's not an upgrade for me. If you scroll down, Starfaller is what I'm currently using. If you take off usable and see if I'm close to anything. Ember wands are at 36, and those are a tiny bit of damage upgrade, but they also start to add in um, bonuses, so you can get stats. There's an Ember wand of the eagle, actually, which is arguably worth getting early, or if you can hold off until level 37 and you can find a Jaina's fire starter, that's pretty good. <laughs> that's a straight int. Plus it's a six and a half DPS up for my current one, as opposed to only like 0.8. Um, but you have to wait. You can't even wear that till 37. I'm 35, so it's two levels. I'm kind of, 19 gold is a decent price. I'm kind of tempted to buy one um, and then hold it for two levels from now. I might do that because that's a really good wand. I don't think it's getting better from that anytime soon. The next good one after that's not until then. I'm going to do it. They were at 30, 30 plus gold for a while. Uh, I didn't end up taking a talent. I wanted to read more. I wanted to read a little bit more about Firestones before I committed. Okay, so there we go. That painful purchase is done. Um, anything else? Weapons? Usable? Anything else? Doesn't have to be wands, just any weapons. That I could use, like, maybe instead of a... Robe of the Magi. In spirit. Nah, nah, nah. I got good robes. 420 gold! Nice. Staff of Jordan. That is an expensive Bowie. I wonder if anyone can realistically afford that. That's funny. Strength Stan. Duskwood Staff has a chance on presumably melee hit to send Shadow Bolts. You get like long swords of bare strength, tiger, etc. That's a good staff too. Stam straight stam and int, but it buffs arcane damage. I don't I don't do any of that. Mm. Yeah, I can't replace I can't, I can't I can't get rid of that staff. It's just too good to have the 14 stam on me. It's too nice. Anything else need upgrading? My neck is kinda old. Eh, I'll worry about it later. I think I'm gonna wrap up for today. We got a nice level. We're feeling we're feeling fresh, we're feeling good. I will probably do a retail stream at some point this week. Um, there was something I wanted to do on retail, although I can't remember what, but I was happy to have a comfy grinding day today. Thank you very much for joining me today. I appreciate your company. I had a great time, and I hope all of you have a wonderful, wonderful night. Bye.